This old story happened to a good boy named Song Bin. The story is about a boy who became a real warrior. Song Bin received a good education, learned to read and write, and learned to speak different languages. We will tell you about how it all happened to him. How a simple boy from the street became a real hero. One afternoon, Songbin was walking to the market to buy fresh vegetables and fruits. An unfamiliar man approached him and pointed his finger at him. An unfamiliar man said that the boy had energy and strength. This power can make him a real warrior. The man promised the boy to make him a real man, a real warrior, and a real hero. Songbin was very scared then and didn't understand what was happening. The boy did not understand what this man wanted from him, and then everything happened to the boy. There were fierce battles with enemies, but on his way, he met kind old men who helped him with parting words and advice. Song Bin met people who belonged to the Dark Force. These were magicians and sorcerers. Usually their faces were not visible. They had long hair. They had superpowers. On Song Bin's way, he also met real brave, very large and strong male warriors with whom he had to fight. The main thing is that the boy studied various martial arts. Training took place both day and night. The boy watched real battles, real fights between good and evil. It was very difficult for him to remember everything that was taught to him. In fact, he had virtually no strength. Also in this story, you will learn about the love of both Songbin and the charming girl he met. This story will have everything, experiences, partings, and of course, love. You will learn how Songbin learned to think, how Sunbil learned to control his powers. You will learn how the boy learned to wield a sword well and hold it tightly in your hands. In this story, you will learn what a boy named Songbin had to go through, find out what difficulties he faced. Dreamwine had to leave his native home. Of course, it was very difficult. The boy was very worried. He wrote letters to family and friends. But as time passed, everything changed. The boy became older and stronger. He had to write a lot. He wrote down various philosophical thoughts that were taught to him. The boy Songbin worked a lot, studied a lot in order to become smarter and more literate. He did not sleep at night and constantly wrote down his thoughts, learned different languages, and I read a lot. Songbin loved nature very much and wrote poems on this topic. He was very good at it, Day and night, he wrote his observations. He wrote down on paper all his thoughts, everything he thought about. Creative activities were replaced by martial arts. Martial arts with a sword took a lot of time and effort, and one day he had to make his most important battle, the most serious fight with an opponent. It was a tough fight. Everything was at stake. All knowledge, all strength had to be applied here and now. This is exactly what we will tell you in detail now. So let's start from the very beginning. It was early morning. There was a small, cozy school in a nice, picturesque place. Our song bin studied at this school. There was theory and practice here. Here he studied languages and writing. Here he studied martial arts. One morning, song bin fell asleep right at the dining table in the dining room. He slept very soundly and heard nothing. At that moment, the teacher entered the cafeteria. He didn't like it very much. The boy continued to sleep right on the table. His snoring and snoring could be heard throughout the dining room. What are you allowing yourself to do? The teacher said. The dining room is not a place to sleep. Song Bin woke up. I saw my evil teacher. The boy looked very tired. Song Bin understood that he needed to eat. So he began pouring sauce over the rice. It didn't look very appetizing on the plate. The boy could no longer eat this rice. Every day there was rice. It was unbearable. With strength, he tried to eat at least a little. Then Sunbin could not stand it and screamed loudly in despair. He couldn't eat this rice anymore. It was unbearable. He screamed with all his might and slammed his fist loudly on the table. The teacher observed all these actions. It was clear from him that he really didn't like it. He didn't like the behavior of this young man. Songbin lay down on the table in despair and cried. He simply did not have the strength to study and eat the same thing all the time. He couldn't look at this rice anymore. How long will this continue? The boy screamed. 
I feel like a slave here. You can scream and say whatever you want, the teacher said. It's your right, but it won't help you. The teacher will come here soon. He won't like it very much. And then there will be a completely different conversation. A large, physically healthy man with a beard walked into the dining room. It was the teacher. He took the bowl of rice and tasted it. The teacher immediately realized that these were just the boy's whims. It was necessary to react, and it was impossible to leave it like that. Lock him in this dining room all night and let him sit and think about his behavior. Very evil, the teacher said to the teacher. Sit all night and think about your behavior, the teacher told the boy. You can sleep on the table. I see you are doing well at this. Maybe you can give me other food, the boy screamed. No, you think better on an empty stomach, the teacher answered. Songbin was left alone with his thoughts. He had absolutely no one to share or talk to. At this moment, the teacher was already thinking, what could he come up with for this boy? What is the punishment so that it will benefit him? Songbin was very upset. Sitting at the dining table, he fell asleep in the dining room. I think it's time for the boy to grow up. The teacher said to the teacher, I completely agree with you, the teacher answered. Tomorrow morning I will wake him up and take him for a walk. The walk will not be easy. Let's see what he can do. I want to raise him to be a real man, brave and courageous, a man who is not afraid of anything. It was early morning. The teacher came to Songbin's cafeteria. At this time, the boy was no longer sleeping. Anyone can shout at a teacher, let's see what you can do in another job. The teacher said to the boy, the teacher grabbed Songbin by the collar and pulled him out the door. The teacher easily lifted Songbin with one hand because he was a very strong man. This is exactly what he wanted to make this boy. Then the teacher took the boy's armpit, like he was like a sack of rice, and he carried him out of the dining room. The teacher carried the boy outside with one hand. The teacher just watched it all. There was nothing he could do to help the boy because it was really time for the boy to grow up and become a man. Of course, the teacher was very worried about the boy. He felt a little sorry for him, but learning comes first. The teacher followed the teacher out into the street. He looked at them and followed them with his gaze, and he prayed that everything would work out for them. The teacher and the boy walked for a long time across the field in the direction of the mountains. The weather was hot, there was tall grass that made walking difficult. The teacher held the boy with one hand. Sometimes he ran to jump over large stones. It looked like the teacher could fly. Songbin was scared. He did not understand where his teacher was taking him. What would happen to him now? The teacher and the boy jumped onto a very high stone and continued to carry it forward. It was a high rock. The teacher ran and jumped off it along with the boy. It was very high and scary. The teacher and the boy flew down to the ground. Songbin was so scared that his heart seemed to stop in fear. They landed successfully on the ground. And the teacher continued to carry the boy with one hand. He didn't let him go for a second. When they reached the place, the teacher released the boy. Songbin fell to the ground and was breathing heavily. He was very scared. The teacher took the boy by the collar of his clothes and lifted him up with one hand. It's time for you to grow up and start being responsible for your words and your actions, the teacher told the boy. The teacher held the boy with one hand. Right above the cliff drop, a fast cold mountain river flowed below. I realized everything, I won't do this again, the boy shouted loudly. The matcha teachers went down to the river. Songbin sat down near the water and began to cry loudly. You have all the makings to become a good warrior, the bravest and bravest. Trust me, the teacher said to the boy. Songbin understood that lessons in the courage of patience had now begun, where he must overcome his fear and step over his weaknesses. Songbin, I began to understand why he was here and what his mission was. Most importantly, he began to understand what the teacher wanted from him. What if I fail? 
I can do almost nothing. If I can't handle it, what then? The boy asked. You are a special child, the teacher said. You have it all. The main thing is to develop your abilities and skills, and then you will become the bravest warrior. I can't do anything, Songbin shouted. I can't do anything, and in general, I'm afraid. I'm still too young to be able to do all this. I don't have as much strength as you, the boy said to his teacher. Don't be afraid. I'll teach you everything. Everything I know myself. I see very great potential in you. Fear will go away. Courage and strength will come. You will feel it. First of all, you need to have peace of mind. First we think, then we act, the teacher told the boy. Songbin stood, looking at the teacher and memorized everything he said. He understood that these were the words of a real man. The teacher was very focused. He clenched his fists very tightly. It seemed that with his strength he could crush a stone in his fist right into the sand. I will teach you to break stones and rocks with your fist, the teacher said to the boy, and he swung his fist with all his might. The teacher hit the rock with his fist. Stones and small fragments flew in different directions. Songbin had never seen such a strong blow before. Small and large stones scattered in different directions. The boy did not understand how this could be done with one blow. Break the stone without hurting your hand. The teacher's fist was very large and the blow was very strong. There was not a scratch on the fist, just some stone chips. My teacher taught me this, the teacher said to his student. And now I want to teach you such a blow. I will teach you everything I know myself. The boy even began to sweat from surprise. He wanted to be like his teacher. At the same time, he understood that this path would not be easy. Remember, work ennobles a person. If you train, then strength and confidence will come. I believe in you. Songbin thought about it. Will he be able to become a real warrior or not? What if the teacher made a mistake about him? And the boy became scared again. He wanted to learn everything about his teacher, but I was very afraid to let him down. He was very afraid that he wouldn't succeed. Don't worry. I will give you tasks that you will have to complete. It will be hard. It will be scary. But you will have to overcome all this within yourself. The teacher said to the boy, Yes, it will not be an easy path. But my boy... You will succeed, I believe in you, the teacher told Songbin. The teacher's gaze gave the boy confidence. He looked into the teacher's eyes and listened to every word he spoke. This was no longer the look of an ordinary boy, but of a growing young man who was ready to change for the better. Master, I want you to show me all your signature moves right now, the most insidious of his blows. I want to learn all this right now, the boy told the teacher. I'm ready. Where do we start? Should we start sword fighting or just hand-to-hand -hand combat? Come on, show me all your moves, the boy told the teacher. Or maybe I need to have super strength. Will you teach me your spells? You probably have them. I'll remember everything. Come on, tell me. I'll remember everything, the boy said. I am ready to learn to fight even with bamboo sticks. Just show me how. I am capable. I will remember. I will succeed. Come on, show me quickly, the boy said. If you're ready, then I'll test what you're capable of. The teacher said to the boy, The main thing is not to rush. This always interferes with achieving results. Great, now I will learn everything and will be as strong and fearless as you, teacher. Oh, I already feel strong. I will wave my arms vigorously, and my opponents will fly off in different directions. I have already memorized some of your tricks. Look how I can do it. Can I do it? The boy spoke and showed it to his teacher. I feel like the power just overwhelms me. It seems to me that I can already do everything. Teacher, give me a task quickly. I will prove to you what I am capable of. The teacher looked at the boy very carefully. He watched and listened to everything he said and everything he showed. The teacher understood that the boy simply believed in himself. He doesn't have the strength yet, but he wants to prove the opposite. You can't be so self-confident, the teacher thought. If you are ready, 
then I have come up with the first task for you. Let's see if you pass this test or not. The boy Songbin folded his hands in front of his chest, bowed to the teacher, and said, I'm ready. The teacher tells me what to do. Songbin was very serious. He clenched his teeth and lips. To show how strong and focused he is, the teacher pointed his finger at the boy and said, Now you will receive your first task. I'll see what you can do. If you can handle it, we will continue training. You must move my pile of broken stones to this road as quickly as possible. Go ahead, go faster. Time passes, I believe. The teacher spoke to the boy and laughed loudly. Songbin moved the entire mountain of broken stones. He placed them near the teacher. He spent a lot of effort and of course was very tired. You completed the first task, my boy. The conclusion from this task is very simple. You listened to me and began to silently carry out my task. This is already good. We are on the right track. But I thought you were going to teach me how to break stones with your fist. Songbin said to his teacher, And I just carried these stones from one place to another, and nothing more. Nothing happens right away and nothing works out. The teacher laughed. All in due time, my boy. This was a strength and endurance exercise. You did it. Well done. The teacher laughed very loudly. I was just like you. I thought that I could learn everything at once. The teacher spoke. Everything will work out. The main thing is to work hard. I already had the work. I realized that. Teacher, I will have such tests, what, every day? The boy asked the teacher. Yes, my boy. You will work every day. I promise you this, the teacher smiled. Trust me, when you are ready, you will learn everything, and it will be very fast. The boy was very tired. He was dragging a large pile of stones, and I didn't learn a single combat technique. The teacher took a large stone into his fist. He held it very tightly. Songbin looked. What will the teacher do now? The teacher shouted loudly and tightly clenched his fist, which contained the stone. Shards of stone scattered in different directions. Most of the stone simply turned into sand. Everything has its time, son, the teacher said. You will learn everything I believe in you. I chose you for a reason and brought you to my school for training. The teacher and the boy Songbin went back home to school. It was already dark and night was coming. The street was quiet and calm. Suddenly there was a strong knock on the door. It was late at night. The teacher was lying in his bed and sleeping. He certainly wasn't expecting any guests. When the teacher opened the door, he saw the teacher and the boy on the threshold of his house. The boy was completely tortured. He had practically no strength, and it was clear that he was sleeping while walking. Take him, wash him, and put him to bed, the teacher said. Nobody canceled the daily routine. Come on in and go to bed quickly, and tomorrow we will continue, the teacher told the boy. The teacher met Song Bin and took him to wash up and then put him to bed. The boy needed to rest because he looked very tired. It was very quiet outside. It was approximately three o'clock in the morning. The whole city was asleep, and people and animals and birds. Only one person did not sleep that night. This is Song Bin. He lay very tired and kept thinking about what happened to him today. He wanted to learn martial arts techniques, but in the end, I just carried stones. Songbin lay there and came up with a plan. He's tired of it all. He is treated like a child and like a slave, and I want to quickly become a real warrior. Songbin got out of bed and decided to escape. He decided to run away from this school, back to his home. He walked quietly along the corridor. He tried to make sure no one heard him, but the boards on the floor creaked very much. Suddenly there was a strong knock on the door. The door shattered into pieces. The boy was thrown to the side by the blast wave. A man appeared in the corridor. The boy saw his legs because he had not yet been able to raise his head up to see who was standing in front of him. It seemed like a teacher. With slow steps, he approached the boy lying on the floor. Where are you going? the teacher asked the boy. Maybe you can take me with you, 
And who will study? The boy's teacher kept asking. I'm just tired of everything, the boy said. I cannot take it anymore. I want to go home. I'm tired. I already told you. Everything has its time. You will work hard and you will succeed. To do this, you need to be strong. Physically, mentally. Trust me, son, the teacher said. I know what I'm saying, the teacher said to the boy. Songbin was very upset, tears flowing down his cheeks. If you listen to me, you will succeed. Do not cry. Be strong. Be a man. This is a small part of the test that you have to go through. Your parents will be proud of you later. Don't let them down. And don't let me down because I made my choice in favor of you. Songbin was upset. Tears streaming down his cheeks. He wanted to become a warrior faster, to master all martial arts techniques. But he just had to work around the house and in the yard. And let's stop being silly, the teacher said. Do you think somewhere will be better than here? I will prove that I am brave. I will prove that I can do everything. Is that clear? The boy shouted loudly. I am not your slave or servant. Song Bin got angry at the teacher. He saw how the other guys trained, and he only had to help with housework and yard work. If you listen to me, I will teach you everything I know. The teacher said to the boy, The main thing is, don't do anything stupid. Of course, it's easy for you to say. The boy said, You are an adult. You can do everything. Everyone fears and respects you. The main thing is to be honest with yourself, the teacher said. For example, I never ran away from my teacher. That's why I am who I am now. Just think about what you're doing wrong, the teacher said. They are afraid, which means they respect. There's something to it. Nice line, the teacher said quietly to himself. One day, I lost my father. It was a long time ago, the teacher said. My father was friends with your father. Then they asked me to look after you as you grew older. That's exactly what I'm doing now, my friend. Do not feel angry with me, the teacher said. Say what you want, I asked the teacher from the boy. I'm tired of eating this damn rice every day. I want spaghetti, pasta, noodles, anything but rice. The next day came. The weather was wonderful outside. There was practically no wind and the sun was shining. Songbin went to the dining room. In the dining room, he was served spaghetti. It was a very tasty seafood pasta. Songbin ate and enjoyed and couldn't stop. It was very tasty. After Songbin ought, he went out to get food again. He took himself a refill. This day was like a holiday, because the food has changed. The teacher came to the cafeteria. He decided to try spaghetti too, although he likes rice better. He took the chopsticks and started spaghetti for her. It was great. The teacher did not understand what was happening. He didn't know that the menu in the cafeteria was changed today. He didn't know that this was the teacher's order. Nose Bandage decided to run away from school anyway. He has already come up with a plan for himself. He pretended to feel unwell and began to leave the dining room. But the teacher noticed this. Where are you going? The teacher asked. Please don't give me away. Please, the boy said. Here, take the money. It's all I have. I don't need your money. Get it out of here. The teacher began to be indignant. This is a bad idea, my boy, the teacher said. Songbin grabbed the teacher by the hands and began to beg him not to tell the teacher about his idea. I cannot take it anymore. Please give me a chance to leave. The boy spoke. The teacher doesn't teach me anything. The boy was indignant and pointed his finger at the teacher. He teaches everyone but not me. I'm like a slave in this school. The boy was indignant. Okay, run into the yard to the gate. I will help you, the teacher said. I'll distract your teacher and you run. Without wasting time, lunch will be over soon. The fuse opened the gate so that the boy has time to run out of the schoolyard. Run through the forest onto the high road, the teacher shouted after the boy. You will reach the city. You will meet merchants. They will help you. Songbin ran out of the schoolyard gate. He stopped for one minute to rest. He was excited, but he's glad what lies ahead. 
Okay, I need to run through the forest. Then you need to run out onto the main road that leads to the city. There, I should see merchants who are heading to the river to sail to another city. Songbin remembered everything the teacher told him. Forward, the boy shouted to himself and ran very fast. He ran so hard that it seemed to him that he was even outrunning the wind. The happiness of freedom filled his heart. He ran and constantly shouted, Yes, I did it! Yes, I did it! After some time, the boy ran out onto the main road. He understood that he had already covered most of the path. It was very hot and stuffy in the forest, but this did not bother the boy. At this time, the teacher learned that his student had run away. He realized that Songbin was determined, should have kept a better eye on him. Let him try. Let's see what he can do. It will be a little experience for him and a lesson. The teacher said to himself, a carriage was passing through the city, two horses and several people inside a cart. They stopped about their business. They wanted to get cold water from the well so that they would have something to drink on the road. The man who was driving the horses heard the boy calling him. The man looked around, but there was no one around in the square. Suddenly a boy ran up to him and began to beg him to take him with him. Please take me with you to the river. I was told that you are kind people and you can help me. The boy said, Who are you and where are you going? The man asked the boy. Do you have money for travel? The man sank. I have nothing, honestly, the boy answered. Take me with you. I don't need anything, just one place. I just want to leave here. People took pity on this boy, took him with them, and went on the road. The horses clattered their hooves along the road, with every step moving the boy away from school. The cart with people traveled for a very long time, through forests and fields. Two horses carried four men and our song bin. It was a long and tedious ride. It seemed that this road would never end, only the sound of the wind, the scorching sun, and the clatter of hooves. The three men in the cart were traitors. They knew each other, so they communicated all the way. And our song bin was just sleeping and gaining strength. Then one of the men in the cart told the boy that they would go to a hotel where he could spend the night. Evening was coming. The sun was setting below the horizon. It was no longer so hot to drive. Songbin sometimes opened his eyes to see what was going on around him. It was boring on the road. The boy had nothing to do, so he just got enough sleep. He slept and dreamed of a better life. The morning came, the sun rose. The carriage moved towards its direction to the city. The carriage arrived in the city. There was a large, wide river along which ships sailed. These were pleasure boats and, of course, merchant ships. On the riverbank, work was in full swing. Longshoremen unloaded boxes and crates from boats, and they loaded new ones into them. The men who were riding in the cart were standing at the market and were already trading. They sold their goods and bought others for themselves. Songbin woke up in his room. It was a very small room with one bed and not even a window. Since I'm here, I need to get up, walk around, and look around. Look at the city, and in general what is happening around. The boy said to himself, Yes, the road was long and difficult, the boy said out loud. Several days on the road simply exhausted Songbin. The boy left his hotel and went to explore the city. It turned out to be a small trading city, on the river bank. On his way, he met a tall tower. He had never seen such houses before. Many floors rose up to the sky. Songbin climbed up this tower to one of the highest floors. He stood on the balcony. He held the handrail with his hands, and he began to look at the whole city from a bird's eye view. It's so nice here, the boy said. He stood on the balcony and the wind blew across his body. Quiet, calm, and no one orders. And the most important thing is that the boy did not know anyone, and no one knew him either. Songbin shouted loudly, Hooray, I'm free! The boy continued to scream. His voice and echo carried on the wind throughout almost the entire city. People appeared on the balcony behind. It was one tall gentleman and his two maids. It was clear from the look of this gentleman that he was dissatisfied. 
Hey, you boy, could you please shut up? There is no need to yell like that at the whole city. Mr. Songbin said, Sir, I didn't shout. I just enjoyed life. I'm just in a good mood. Emotions overwhelm me. This fills me with anger. The gentleman shouted, Your scream just gives me a headache. I came here to rest, not to listen to you scream. So just shut your mouth, boy. It's immediately obvious that you are very uneducated. Not knowing who your parents are, but I would talk to them. How my head is pounding and the screams of these poor people. Who even let you into this house? How did you get here? I was indignant, sir. Sir, you are talking too rudely to me. In appearance, you look like an intelligent person. But your behavior is simply disgusting, said the boy to the master. The gentleman began to swear very loudly and scream loudly. His indignation knew no bounds. The boy became a little scared. The gentleman opened his robe and the boy saw a sword on his belt. Sunbin realized that this was a martial artist, that he might not be well now. I think if you are so smart, you should answer for your words. The Lord said to the boy, If you are smart, that means you are strong. There must be logic. Let's check it now. As far as I understand, the boy has an education, my lord. The maid said, My lord, he's just a poor boy. But someone was clearly involved in his upbringing. He is a brave boy because he dared argue with you. Maybe I still need to listen to his opinion? Who is he? He was loudly indignant, sir. I guess I'm the person who should put you in your place. Songbin said, I'm too well brought up to be rude to my elders. Poor boy, you will regret what you told me here. No one, you hear, no one has the right to talk to me like that. The gentleman said loudly. There was a little fear in the boy's eyes. But now, more than ever, he was confident in his words and that he was right. The gentleman yelled and was rude to him. The gentleman began to grab his sword, which hung on his belt. The situation was tense to the limit. Do you need to do something, the boy thought. Just what? The boy did not have a combat sword, and he did not master martial arts techniques. The gentleman took a few steps forward towards the boy. He grabbed his great battle sword. It's time to cut off your long tongue for everything you say, the gentleman shouted. Mister, don't stop, the second maid screamed. What are you doing? It's just a boy. He is not your rival. Here I decide who is an opponent and who is not. If the boy has not been taught good manners, that's his problem. I'll, I'll punish him. So that he remembers this once and for all. The poor, uneducated boy should know his place. The master raised his large battle sword above his head. He swung at the boy. The sun's ray reflected from the metal. This is all over, the boy thought. He was free and enjoyed life for such a short time. Until I met this crazy gentleman, beads of sweat ran down Songbin's face. The boy became very angry. His fear faded into the background. You were rude to me, boy. And you have to pay for it. Otherwise, I will lose respect. Position is the main thing for me. The Lord said to the boy, You were the one who yelled at me. You were the one being rude. I was just enjoying life, and not your status, but I will accept this fight no matter what. Now I will show you who is right here. I will cut off with a long tongue that you no longer shouted at the whole city. I'm right, trust me, not the poor boy. Come on, I'm ready, start, the boy screamed loudly. Songbin was no longer afraid of anything. I will fight you with my bare hands, to prove you're right. Let people see who is right and who is wrong. People will judge. People are not stupid. It's an uphill battle, but I'm ready, the boy said. The gentleman was simply furious. He was simply not himself. He didn't expect the poor little boy to confront him. The gentleman went straight to attack the boy. He brandished his large iron sword. The boy Songbin froze in fear. His whole life flashed before his eyes. It seemed to him that this was the end, and he could not do anything about it. The boy swung his foot hard and hit the master straight in the stomach. The blow was very strong. Songbin himself did not expect this. The gentleman staggered and flew to the side. 
He did not expect such a confrontation. He lost his breath. It was painful. Who are you? The boy asked. You don't know my name, believe me. I once studied with the best teacher in the best school. Which, by the way, you escaped from. And just so you understand, we don't abandon our own. This is the main rule of our school. But I see you haven't gotten to this point. The girl said ironically, Tell me your name, girl. I don't fight with women. But I see this as a special case. Your name fast, the gentleman shouted. My name is Lisa. Does this make you feel better? Now you know who will punish you for your arbitrariness, Lisa shouted. I had a rule not to fight women. But I see this as a special case. We will have to move away from these rules. Nobody invited you here. It's your own fault. Well, they didn't call me. I came myself. I don't like it when big men offend little ones. I see that you only know how to scream. And choose opponents younger than yourself. I don't respect people like that. Maybe you can show what you are capable of, Lisa said. The gentleman became very angry. This was the greatest anger he had ever felt. He clenched his teeth very hard in anger. The gentleman was very angry. He made strange sounds and waved his iron sword left and right. He decided to attack the girl. Break your rules and punish her, because in front of everyone she disgraced him. I will make you regret this, the master shouted. There was no need to come here. I will fight you like a man, said the gentleman. Let's see what you can do, Lisa said. I had different opponents in the fight, but I have never seen such impudent ones. You will now answer for your words, the gentleman shouted loudly. He gritted his teeth and ran to fight towards the girl. It seemed as if wind and dust had risen around them. The gentleman ran with his iron sword to meet the girl in order to deal with her. Lisa pressed two fingers into her palms and quietly cast a spell. What the hell is going on? The gentleman shouted. His sword stopped midair. He himself froze in an incomprehensible position. Suddenly the girl Lisa began to deliver her insidious blows with her sword. In this fight she dealt many blows, sir. She hit him and pushed him very far away. The gentleman flew away from the girl. He was simply in shock. He just didn't expect that the girl could fight so well, and it has such power. Is this all you are capable of? Lisa asked the gentleman loudly. You are a weakling. This is because you are a grown man who decided to fight with a simple boy. I don't intend to listen to insults from you. Who are you to teach me life? This girl who has good upbringing and manners. She protects the weak and those younger than her. Unlike you. Songbin said, Sir, it seems to me that she is stronger than you. I also think she's right and you should apologize. All people will see and hear this and this act will earn you respect. This will never happen, you hear never, the gentleman shouted. I'm above apologizing to a brash girl. I don't need your apologies, Lisa shouted. I'm not a little girl, I'm a real warrior and I can take care of myself. I tied myself again. The grinding of metal and the ringing blows of swords against each other echoed throughout the street. From the outside it was clear that this battle was very difficult for the gentleman. He couldn't attack. He mostly defended himself. He fought off Lisa's blows, which was too much. Lisa was very focused on this fight. Calmness and concentration were the most important things at that moment. I was raised to protect those younger than me. I see you didn't have such an upbringing, Lisa shouted. And again she began to continue striking. The gentleman fought off the girl's blows as best he could. Lisa struck with her iron sword one after another, constantly attacked the master. Lisa knocked the sword out of the master's hands. It was such a strong blow that he simply could not hold it in his hands. The sword fell to the floor. You wounded my hand, the gentleman shouted. You know who I am? Do you know what will happen to you now for this? The gentleman shouted at the girl. The girl Lisa put her sword to the master's chest. I see the fear in your eyes. You are weak. You are only strong at offending little ones. This is so low and mean. I feel sorry for you, Lisa said to Mr. Where are your manners? Where is your upbringing? 
You're on your knees and begging for mercy. My sword in my hands is my strength. This is my truth. And your sword is worth nothing with you or without you. I don't know who raised you. But at my school they made me a man, who not only masters martial arts, but also has a good command of the art of good manners. Thank you, Lisa, the boy said. At first glance, you don't seem so strong. I am very glad to meet you. I'm also happy about Sunbin, Lisa said. Come on, I have a lot to tell you. Let this idiot sit and think about his behavior. Remember, our conversation is not over. Just get in my way. I'll remember everything for you, the gentleman said after the boy. You ran away from school too early. You didn't have to do that. All your training is still ahead. You are ahead of your entire future journey, Lisa said to the boy. You will meet different people on your way, Songbin, Lisa said. Be careful, thinking with your head about who you can say what and who you can't say. Know one thing, you have the best teacher in school. The gentleman remained sitting on the ground. He was in pain and was bleeding from his arm. The worst thing was that he was ashamed. Lisa and the boy reached a large building. Thank you very much for your help, the boy said to Lisa. You saved my life. I am your debtor. No need for gratitude, Lisa replied. But of course I will remember about your debt, Lisa said. I have nothing to give you. So just thank you as part of my gratitude. If it weren't for you, I probably wouldn't be standing here anymore. And this idiot would assert himself at the expense of me in front of his servants. Okay, thanks accepted, so be it, the girl said. I'm glad you appreciate the help. It means there is something good for you. I'll tell you again. You shouldn't have run away from school. You haven't learned anything yet. We already want to resist evil on our own. I thought I was ready. I was actually really tired because I hadn't done anything other than just work at school. He removed stones, swept the streets, and brought water. The teacher instilled in you responsibility and hard work. And you avoided it at the first stage of training. A shame, the girl said. It is not that simple, the boy said. I wanted to quickly start learning martial arts. Become a real kung fu master. But there was no training, there was just labor work. The main thing is that you have to understand yourself, boy, Lisa said. You must understand what you want and what you need. Only then can you move on. You just need to go back to school. The teacher will understand everything. He is a man. He will forgive you. Because he saw potential in you. There are no random people in this school, remember. Lisa said. Random people? The boy asked. What does this mean, answer? Are you saying that he chose me for a reason? Everything in this life is not accidental, believe me, Lisa said. There may be a lot of bad people on your way. You must know how to behave and how to act in different situations. Thank you again, Lisa. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be alive anymore. Your advice really helps me understand myself. The master's silhouette still stood in the boy's eyes. Lisa, what do you think will happen to me if I go back to school? Are you sure the teacher can forgive me? The boy asked. I say what I know. You just have to trust me. I graduated from this school and went through everything, so I know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Lisa. I will definitely fight for my future. I also want to become just like you, the same brave warrior. Everything is in your hands and everything is in your head, Lisa said to the boy. Can you take me with you? The boy asked. I won't be a burden to you. I am a very good learner. I'm capable, believe me. The boy continued talking. To me, my friend, everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own path and everyone has their own destiny. You still have a lot to learn. Learn to control your emotions. Learn to be strong. Learn various martial arts, the girl said. Okay, okay, I understand, the boy said. I will learn all this, I promise you, Songbin said confidently. Goodbye, my friend. Think about what I told you. As she left, Lisa said to the boy, Be careful, the boy shouted. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Thank you for everything. Lord, 
is there really a girl like her? The boy said. He greatly admired her courage, courage, and core strength. Night has come. Songbin decided to go back home to school. He walked all night. The boy got very hungry, saw a small restaurant, and decided to eat there. He ordered his favorite noodles with soy sauce. It was very tasty. Tastier than the rice he ate every day at school. The boy ate the whole bowl and ordered himself another. The boy ate several servings of noodles. He could have eaten more. But I simply didn't have the strength anymore. Three men entered the restaurant. The restaurant immediately became a little quiet. The boy did not understand what was happening. People began to look at each other. There was tension. All the restaurant visitors began to look in the boy's direction. There is a restaurant. Three men were standing. They had angry faces. They looked very strong and looked like guards. Where is this impudent boy? One of the guards asked. The restaurant administrator was very scared. Of course, he didn't want problems in his restaurant. If you are looking for a young man in a blue robe, he is sitting at table five. The restaurant administrator said and pointed his finger in the boy's direction. Songbin did not expect such a turn of events. It was his first time in the city and in this restaurant. The boy did not understand what these people wanted from him. The fifth table is mine, the boy said. Are you talking about me now or did I imagine? The boy asked. This is definitely him. One of the guards said, The main feature is an impudent boy who loves to talk, likes to argue with adults. The guards quickly walked towards the boy to the fifth table. Security guards began to surround him in this restaurant. So stop. Men stop, I say, the boy said. You probably made a mistake. I do not know you at all. I'm seeing you for the first time. I couldn't offend you or hurt your feelings. Based on your description, everything agrees with us. Everything points to you. Was it you who was rude to our master in the great tower? The guards asked the boy. I don't understand what you're talking about. I wasn't being rude. I just said he was wrong. Your master is a grown man who has no self-control. He is not well-mannered and is just a boor, the boy answered. Songbin immediately remembered Lisa, the girl who gave him a lot of useful and necessary advice. There was also a girl with you. She decided to stand up for you. She has disgraced our master. She will also be punished. Where is she? The guard shouted at the boy. The boy collected his thoughts and said, Yes, it was me. Your master fought with me. There was no one else. He probably thought it was out of fear. Yes, it definitely seemed to him that there was a girl. I was completely alone. Your master was just very scared. The boy repeated, It's a lie. Our master speaks only the truth. He is a very respected man in the city. We'll find this girl, the guard said. Come on, quickly, tell me where is she? You have come here to avenge our master, or did you think he would forget it? I don't know anything about the girl. I repeat to you, I was absolutely alone. I can see perfectly well that you are lying. I'm giving you one last chance to tell the truth. Where is the girl? Answer. The boy was silent and did not confess. The girl Lisa helped him a lot then. All he could do now was just remain silent. Don't give it away. Take him. Grab. Twist his arms, one of the guards shouted. Two guards held the boy's hands tightly. One guard stood in front of the boy and shouted loudly at him. You'll come with us, okay? The guard shouted at the boy. I'm not going anywhere. What are you doing? The boy shouted. Let me go quickly. The boy continued to scream. The guards did not listen to the boy and led him out of the restaurant by the arms. They were very strong. The boy struggled to escape from the guard's hands. If you don't stop yelling, I'll hit you. One guard smiled and said, You understood me? The guard asked the boy. The guard raised his fist to hit the boy in the face. But Songbin managed to dodge this blow. Get your dirty hands off the boy. A loud male voice was heard. The chronicles turned around in fear. Three against one. Is that manly? The man shouted loudly. 
The guards turned back once again and stopped. You are just cowards. Your master is also a coward. Only a coward would send three big guards after one little boy. Songbin recognized this voice. It was very unexpected. He looked back and saw his teacher, a person who does not leave his people in trouble. Who the hell are you? One of the guards asked. I do not understand what is going on. My name is too famous to be mentioned by ear, the teacher said. I see you weren't taught good manners, so I'll have to do it. Why are you so brave? The guard shouted loudly. There are three of us, and you are alone. I have never seen someone as stupid as you, the guard said. Did you call me stupid? The teacher was indignant. Yes, he did. The guard answered. Now you will have to deal with our master. He is a kung fu master. So your master is a kung fu master. The teacher was surprised and asked, You won't be able to scare me, these boys. I know very well who a kung fu master is. At this moment, there was a pause. The fighting spirit of the guards simply disappeared. It was clear from them that they were very scared. I won't have any trouble dealing with you three. I'm standing and thinking now. Which one of you should I start with now? The teacher said ironically. The guards stopped holding the boys' hands. They felt fear. They saw that this formidable, confident man was very strong. Fight means fight, one of the guards shouted. We will fight for our master like real wars. The guards released the boy. They began to take an advantageous position in order to fight. Your master is too stupid. Life has taught him nothing, said the teacher to the guards. It's time to teach you how to behave correctly and well, the teacher said. The guards grabbed their iron swords. They were ready to take this fight, three against one. The teacher very deftly and skillfully dealt with these guards. Each of them suffered greatly from him. Teacher, stop, that's enough. The boy screamed and grabbed the teacher's hand. Stop it, it's not worth it. What you said? Tell me again that you feel sorry for them. The teacher was very indignant. They grabbed you. They wanted to take you to their master. Believe me, my boy, you wouldn't be happy there. They would just kill you, and that's it. Perhaps you are right, teacher, the boy answered. But if you kill them, then you will be just as bad as them. You taught us that cruelty is bad, the boy said. I am very glad that you remembered what I told you all the time at school. It did you good, my boy. I remembered almost everything you told us at school. I met Lisa, who helped me. It turns out that she also studied at your school. Just stop this cruelty. You never taught us this. Please. These guards are too stupid to answer for their master. Okay, my boy. I'm very glad that my lessons learned from this. I'm glad that everything I said didn't pass you by. I listened to you. Now listen to me. You have great potential that needs to be realized and developed. So I ask you to go back to school. The teacher said. If I go back to school, won't you punish me for running away? I think I've matured a lot lately. I'm ready to practice Kung Fu, the boy said. Turn on the TV. I liked what the boy said. He began to clap his hands. It was real male applause. I'm letting you go, said the teacher to the guards. I wish I never saw you in this restaurant and in this city. I hope you got what I meant, said teacher. The guards, beaten half to death, helped each other escape from this restaurant and the city. They were very hurt and upset. It hurt because my whole body hurt from the blows. It's a shame because the three of them didn't have enough strength to defeat one man. So I suggest leaving this restaurant and returning to your home school. The teacher suggested to his student Songbin. The teacher took the boy by the hand and they walked toward the house. It was deep night. It was very dark outside. The school building was practically invisible in the dark. The old teacher was sleeping peacefully in his bed. He definitely wasn't expecting any guest today. It was already too late. Suddenly the teacher heard a knock on the door. There was loud fist knocking on his house. The teacher stood up from his bed to open the door. The old teacher opened the door and saw the teacher and the boy Songbin on the threshold of his house. They were tired but very happy. Are you receiving guests today? 
the teacher asked with a smile. Teacher, I'm very hungry. I'm ready to eat a whole elephant, the boy said. The old teacher stood on the threshold of his house. He shined a flashlight on his guests. Now I'll feed you, the teacher said. Come in. A lot of different food appeared on the table. The aromas and smell filled the entire room. Everything looked very appetizing. The boy teachers poured hot tea for each other to warm up. Tea with honey, lemon, and ginger is simply an elixir for any fatigue. I was really very tasty. This is one of the teacher's favorite drinks. This tea always warms and calms. After a while, the teacher and the boy just sat at the table and looked at each other. They were silent and did not know what to say. I think it's time for you and I to have a serious conversation. The teacher said to the boy, I think it's time for you to go back to school and start studying. You have good potential that just needs to be developed. This is my goal to make you a real warrior. But I'm not at all like you, teacher, the boy said. I can do practically nothing. I don't have as much strength as you. I'm probably not capable of anything. I'll tell you the truth, my boy. I have business in this city. Too many enemies have accumulated over all this time. I haven't seen some enemies for a long time. Based on recent events, I see that they want to meet with me and deal with me, the teacher said. Are you going to fight them alone, one against all? This is suicide, the boy told the teacher. There is one gang. This is a gang of thugs. They came together from different parts of the world. They do not obey anyone and instill fear in the inhabitants of cities. This is a real clan of bandits. Each of them is good at what they do. If they are not stopped, then disaster may occur. I had to meet each of them in battle. Each of them harbored a grudge against me because I defeated them. And now they have come together to take revenge on me. But they are unlikely to succeed. I have a lot of students who can help in difficult times. Master, perhaps I can help you, Songbin said. Two people are better than one, the boy said. Eat and gain strength, the teacher told the boy. This is the most important thing for now. We'll deal with the rest a little later, the teacher said. Then the teacher simply ate in silence. He made sure the boy also ate and gained strength. Master, I am truly ready to help you. I will do anything to win. I'm ready to study further, the boy said. Then you need to go back to school and resume training. This is the most important thing now. You have a lot to learn, the teacher said. Songbin stood and listened very carefully to his teacher. He listened to every word. He looked into his eyes. I am ready to obey you. I am ready to fulfill your every task, teacher. I want to be just like you, the boy said. It's very good that you realize this. You yourself came to this conclusion. Now I see that you have really matured, the teacher said. We live in a time when goodness must save the world. Only good should win. Otherwise, there is no point in living on this earth. He said, teach the boy. I completely agree with you, the boy told the teacher. Songbin looked down, feeling a little ashamed for running away from school. The teacher took the boy's hand. He clasped his hand with his hand, like a real father. Together we are strong, we will win, the teacher said. We do not abandon our own in trouble. This is the main thing I taught you. There is no time for long preparations, the teacher said. Now you are next to me and I am calm. We won't delay. Every day is worth its weight in gold, so we will study right from today. Today? the boy asked. I will also perform feats just like you, teacher. I like it. True, I don't know a single kung fu move yet. But I learn very quickly. Trust me, teacher. Don't worry about it. I'll teach you everything. It is not difficult. The main thing for me was that you grow up. Realized his mission. You have me, so don't be afraid of anything. Watch me. Watch, memorize, and repeat. It's simple. At that moment, the boy felt very confident in himself. He was not at all scared around the teacher. The boy realized that the teacher was counting on him very much. The main thing is that he believes in him. He can't let his teacher down. 
This is my chance, the boy thought, now or never. He had been waiting for this moment for a long time, and now it happened. The teacher will train him. The boy really wanted to become a real warrior. He had been waiting for this moment. He really wanted to be needed and benefit humanity. He was ready to train every day, every minute. Learn everything his teacher knows as quickly as possible. The next day came. The weather was wonderful. The teacher and the boy went to train. The teacher walked with long, fast steps. Songbin couldn't keep up with him at all. It was not easy for the boy. His steps were much smaller than the teacher's. He couldn't keep up with him. The boy stopped near every tree. He wanted to catch his breath. Take a breath, gain strength, and move on. I don't understand how the teacher doesn't get tired, the boy thought. The teacher walked forward with a confident step. His breathing was calm. He seemed not to be tired at all. You are still too weak physically. The teacher said to the boy, Don't worry, this can be fixed. The teacher said, I am still a child and you are a grown man. There is nothing to compare here. Therefore, you are not tired at all. I just couldn't keep up with you, the boy said. You must hear and listen to your body, the teacher said. Feel it. Then you will understand how to distribute your strength. First, you need to learn how to breathe correctly. Then the load will be transferred much easier. Your breathing will not be interrupted. And it will be easy for you, the teacher said. The teacher and the boy were sitting on the stones under a tree. The teacher gave a lot of useful advice. Songbin listened to everything and remembered everything. So if I breathe correctly, it will be easy for me and I won't get tired. Right? That's all? The boy asked the teacher. That's it, the teacher answered. Trust me, this is very important for you, the teacher said. I'll probably write this down so I don't forget, the boy said. Songbin is used to writing down smart phrases, useful tips, so as not to forget them, and then quietly reread it alone with yourself. It's a good habit to write down the right words and the right tips. Take this habit as a basis. Then you definitely won't forget anything. The teacher said to the boy, In this notebook, Songbin began to write down useful tips and his observations back in school. There's a lot of interesting things here. It turns out that you are a very literate boy, the teacher said. Not all children at your age can write and know how to read and write. I noticed drawings in your notebook. You drew various kung fu moves right in your notebook. Well done, the teacher said to the boy. I just watched you during training. I saw fighting stances and techniques. I drew them in my notebook so as not to forget, the boy said. Songbin was very pleased that the teacher praised him. This was the first time. Evening came. The teacher and the boy were returning home to school. The boy immediately went to his bedroom in his room. He fell onto the bed exhausted. From fatigue, he could not move his arms or legs. The boy was so tired that he didn't even undress. I was so tired that I didn't even go to wash myself. His teacher came into the boy's room. Stop sleeping, the teacher said. Get up. Sleep is good, but great things await us. Let's go, the teacher said to his boy. The boy did not understand what was happening. He just wanted to sleep. Teacher, what are we going to do at night? The boy asked. All normal people sleep at night. Are we normal people? The boy asked. We are normal people, the teacher said. We just have insomnia. The teacher laughed loudly. Look how round and beautiful the moon is. Today is the full moon. This means it's time to start training. The teacher said to the boy, Follow me, don't lag behind, the teacher said. The teacher and the boy walked along the road for a long time. It was a little cold, so Songbin covered himself with a blanket. Here we are, said the teacher. Now I'll show you a few techniques. The teacher began to take out his iron sword. This sword was very huge and heavy. The teacher began to swing his iron sword left and right. He showed various movements and techniques. The teacher showed how to fight, 
how to confidently hold a sword in your hands. Songbin looked at the teacher and remembered everything. It turns out it's not that simple, the boy thought. I definitely can't lift such a heavy sword. This requires a lot of strength. The teacher demonstrated various sword strokes with your right hand. Then he showed me how to attack with my left hand. It was all in motion and very fast. It seemed that the teacher was simply cutting through the air and wind around him. The blows and movements were very fast. How does he do this? The boy thought. Songbin stood there and memorized every move. Every blow. Remember this blow too. It's called a roundhouse kick. The main thing here is speed and surprise. The teacher shouted to the boy. The teacher made a quick circular movement around his axis at 360 degrees. It was very beautiful and impressive. Moonlight fell on the iron sword. He glowed like a lamp in a dark forest. My God, how does he do this? The boy said with admiration about the teacher. It's just like in a movie. Continued to admire, boy. The boy began to take out his notebook. He urgently wanted to write down and sketch everything, every technique and every blow. Look, my boy. Remember, this technique is called a beasting. It is performed with the left hand. An accurate quick strike forward, the teacher said. This blow is called a spear blow. We hold the sword firmly with both hands. We throw our hands forward and deliver this insidious blow. 90 degrees as hard as I can. The teacher continued talking. The most important thing is that you must be completely focused on the shot. Your hand and your sword are one, the teacher said. Your hand and your sword are one. The boy repeated these words. This means the sword is an extension of the hand. The boy added, Brilliant! You should definitely write this down in your notebook. This is useful advice. Philosophy of combat. Kung Fu philosophy. The teacher continued to talk and show various Kung Fu techniques. You managed to write down and remember everything, my boy, the teacher asked. I hope you remember everything, to swing a sword so professionally. You need to work hard and for a long time. This takes years of training. This is the art of wielding military weapons. You and him must become one. And remember, you must use your skills only for the benefit of good on earth, the teacher said. The boy stood and wrote down in his notebook everything his teacher said. It was a real martial art lesson. Songbin already imagined that he was a real warrior and could, just like the teacher, wield this iron sword. The teacher looked at the boy and thought, it was not for nothing that I chose him. It will be useful. The main thing is that he does not chicken out. This concludes our first training and our first lesson is over. Let's go back home to school. Let's repeat everything you remember, the teacher said. Morning had already come and it became quite light. The teacher and the boy were walking back to school. A new day has come. The weather was clear. There was almost no wind. The clouds floated smoothly across the sky. After another training session, the teacher and the boy returned home. Evening was coming. The sun was setting behind the mountains. The teacher went first. He had a sword and a sheath behind his back. There was not a drop of fatigue on the teacher's face. There is a boy behind the show teacher. He was a little tired. Songbin didn't like to walk a lot. How did you like today's training? The teacher asked the boy. I'm just delighted, the boy replied. This is just the beginning. I have a lot to teach you. The main thing is that you have a desire to become better, the teacher said. The teacher looked at the boy proudly. He was pleased that the boy was enjoying these activities. I realize that every movement, every swing of the sword has its own meaning. Its meaning, the boy said. Well done. You have understood the truth. This is the philosophy of Kung Fu and any martial arts, the teacher said to the boy. I also realized that I really wanted to eat. I'm very hungry, the boy said. They approached a large, beautiful restaurant. The delicious smell of food floated through the air. The boy teacher decided to go to this restaurant. 
The boy was the first to enter the restaurant. At the entrance, there were large curtains that had to be opened to enter. There were a lot of people in the restaurant. They were in completely different clothes. This meant that they were from different classes. Sorry, may I ask? Tell me, please, is there a free table where you can sit? I asked the boy from the waiter. Let's not stand still. Move forward. The teacher said to the boy, Let's look for a free table ourselves where we can sit. The boy's teacher began to look around in the restaurant. At first glance, it seemed that all the tables were occupied. There were a lot of visitors. Welcome to our cozy restaurant, the administrator said. How can I help you? We need a free table, the teacher said. I have one free table just for you. Let me take you there, the administrator said. And they went to sit down at the table. The boy immediately began to order. Please bring us your best dish, a lot of meat and good hot tasty tea, the boy told the administrator. Previously, the boy thought that the restaurant was only for the rich. Now he looked around him and understood that all people are completely different. The boy saw that there were richer people middle class, and the poor. The boys' teachers sat at a table or had tea and talked. It seemed that they had known each other for a very long time. The teacher slowly drank hot aromatic tea. He loved to savor every sip. Here's some advice for you, my boy, the teacher said. First, you have to look at the person, assess him, and understand who he is. You need to understand the situation, understand the person. Only then, Songbin, can you do something. The teacher continues talking. For example, I don't care who is dressed and how. I don't care what they think about me. But if they attack me, I have to make the right decisions. This is the main thing. The teacher speaks. Yet now people are looking around and looking at us. We are strangers to them in this restaurant, the boy said. I feel people's eyes on me. This makes me feel awkward, and my appetite disappears. The boy continued talking. There were actually four people sitting at the next table who were constantly looking around and looking at the teacher and the boy. The gaze of these people constantly darted towards the table at which the teacher and the boy were sitting. I think they are planning bad things against us, Songbin said to the teacher. These two are clearly not from our city. I've never seen them here before. One of the girls said, pointing at the teacher with the boy. That bearded man looks very strong. He doesn't inspire confidence in me, the second girl said. A man with a beard has a large sword. This can only mean one thing, that he is a martial artist. Most likely this is true. He is tall and strong. He is 100% Kung Fu master. Yes, that is right. This is immediately obvious from its appearance. The man has a very old ancient sword. It costs a lot of money on the black market. Collectors will buy it for any money. Are you suggesting that we steal it? The girl asked. Certainly. There are two of us. One of us, plus a boy. I don't see any problems. We just need a clear, good plan. I suggest you develop it right now. We don't have a minute to waste. They can get up and leave the restaurant. I suggest you act quickly. I suggest putting them to sleep. We add sleeping pills to their tea. They will drink. They will lose their vigilance. They will go out into the street, and then we will attack them. The girls quietly added sleeping pills to the tea, which was brought to the table where the teacher and the boy were sitting. The boy's teachers did not suspect anything. They just sat at the table and talked. The teacher took his mug of tea and began to drink sip after sip enjoying this wonderful favorite drink. The teacher felt unwell. He felt dizzy. He dropped the mug from his hands and it broke. The boy Songbin also felt bad. His stomach hurt and he felt dizzy. The boy's mug also fell out of his hands. It broke and tea spilled on the table. It seems to me that the sleeping pills have begun to work. One girl said to the second, I have a strange feeling, feeling tired and really want to sleep. The teacher said to the boy, And if they fall asleep right at this table, what will we do then? One girl asked. Songbin sat at the table and looked at the broken pieces of his teacup. If they fall asleep right at the table, it won't be very good. 
There are a lot of people here. This is not good for us. I poured a small dose of sleeping pills into a cup. I don't think it will knock them off their feet right in this restaurant. This bearded man needs five of these before the sleeping pills. Not less. If a boy falls asleep at the table, that's the end of our plan. There is no way we can sneak up and steal the sword. Let's hope they don't fall asleep. According to my plan, they should go outside. They will want to sleep. Their vigilance will be lost. At this moment, we will attack them. It's almost dark outside already. This is wonderful. We won't be visible in the dark. Great. Then everyone will get ready and go outside. We hide behind the trees, the girl said. It was very dark outside. <laughs> Only the bright white moon illuminated the road a little. The boy's teachers went outside. Listen to me, my boy. I suggest you do a little training, the teacher said. This will help us wake up. Come follow me, the teacher said, and they went along the road. Why do we always go out to train at night? I don't understand, the boy Songbin said. I like your training, teacher, the boy said. But why don't we train during the day? I don't understand. Because you have to get over yourself. Overcome your weakness, fatigue, overcome your sleep, the teacher said to the boy. Look, I think we're being watched, the teacher said and pointed to the left. People's clothes were visible in the darkness. It was completely unclear how many there were. Bravo. You make our plan even easier. You have come to a dark place where no one will see or hear you. Bravo, the girl said. These are the people from the restaurant, the boy said loudly to the teacher. I warned you that they were watching us. I told you, the boy said. One of the people attacked the boy. He ran towards the boy to grab him, but Songbin was not at a loss. He used the technique that the teacher showed him. The boy himself did not understand how he did it, but the enemy was already lying on the ground. I suggest you get out of here. Otherwise, I am not responsible for myself. The teacher said loudly, I give you a chance to leave here healthy and on your own two feet. I'm counting to three. One, two, three the teacher said loudly. He's not joking, I can tell you that for sure. The boy said to the robbers, look at him, how healthy he is. The robbers were in great pain because they did not expect that the sleeping pills would not work. They didn't expect such a response. The robbers rose from the ground. They shook off dirt and dust from their clothes. They were in pain and were breathing heavily. Forgive us, O great master, we didn't know who you were. You are a noble man, very brave, very strong. We're just stupid girls. It's very good that you realize your mistakes. The main thing is to do it on time, the teacher said. What did you want? Why do you need us? Why were you following us? Why did they attack us? The teacher asked questions. Or steal your antique sword, then sell it on the black market to collectors, the girl said. It was a very stupid idea, let me tell you. The teacher answered, I could have just killed you. I wonder what should I do with you now? The teacher asked loudly. Forgive us, for God's sake, master. It was a big mistake on our part to attack you, if you wanted to fight. Then fight like real wars. Take your sword in your hands. Let's see what you are capable of, the teacher said. The girl took her small sword. She held it in front of her with both hands. The girl drew her sword. It was not as big as the teacher's. Song Bean understood that now there would be a real master class from the teacher. He took out his notebook and prepared to write. The boy sat and waited for the battle to begin. He understood that the teacher would not kill this girl. The teacher will simply teach her a lesson. The teacher was already ready for a real fight. He held his large iron sword tightly in his hands. The boy was a little worried. What if something goes wrong? Song Bin. Just look at me and remember. No, better write it down. You're good at this. This is my master class for you. Song Bin opened his notebook, sat more comfortably, took a pen, and prepared to write down everything he saw. I was looking forward to new kung fu techniques from the teacher. He was even ready to sketch the best moments. The opponent took out his sword and ran quickly in the direction of the teacher. She jumped very high into the sky to give the teacher a super kick. 
The teacher stood confidently on two legs and held his sword tightly. He was ready for this attack. A sword fight ensued. The grinding sound of metal echoed throughout the forest. Sparks flew in different directions. No one wanted to give in to the two of them. The teacher attacked and fought back, only to make the opponent tired. The swords clashed against each other. The evil from the metal spread throughout the forest. Everything around seemed to freeze. The fight continued. Nobody wanted to give in. Nobody wanted to give up. The girl again jumped very high to strike the teacher from above. In the air, she did a somersault and took the sword with both hands to deliver her insidious blow. The teacher was very calm and concentrated on this battle. He controlled the entire process. My boy, do you write down everything you see? The teacher asked. Yes, my teacher. I try to write everything down. I even sketch some of your attacks in my notebook. The boy answered. It was late at night. The moon shone so brightly like a lantern. The rest of the people from the restaurant also stood aside and watched the battle take place. The boy Songbin also stood and watched the battle unfold. He had never seen anything like this before. Everything was real. The teacher fought very beautifully. He showed different techniques that the boy had never seen before. The boy tried to very quickly record all the movements and all the kung fu techniques that his teacher performed. This fight continued. Everyone showed everything they can do in martial arts. Master? I don't want you to give in to me! <laughs> the girl shouted loudly at the teacher. <laughs> the teacher was very serious. He was in complete control of this fight. Everything went according to his scenario and according to his plan. From the outside, it looked very beautiful. Two strong rivals who were not inferior to each other. The boy had never seen such a fight before. The teacher delivered his signature roundhouse kick. The force was so great that the girl was thrown several meters back. It was great, the girl told the teacher. I have never seen such a blow before. I'll remember it. It will be useful to me. You are a very good fighter, the teacher said. You fought with swords with dignity. I praise you. Very unexpected. You fought well. I suggest ending this fight, the teacher said to the girl. Thank you for the compliment, the girl said to the teacher. It's doubly nice to hear this from you. I would like to rest a little and continue the fight. You are a worthy opponent. I really enjoyed fighting with you. You are interested in this fight because you did not have a strong opponent. I'm right? The teacher asked the girl. Yes, you are a worthy opponent. I learn a lot from you during the fight. It costs a lot. Don't worry. At the end of the fight, I will provide you with an invoice for my master class, the teacher said and smiled. I've rested. Let's continue, master. I'm ready to continue fighting. Just don't give in to me, the girl said. There will be no mercy. Is this what you wanted to hear from me? The teacher asked the girl. He took the sword in his hands and was ready to continue the fight. The girl grabbed her sword in her hands and ran to attack the teacher. She was very serious about the fight. The teacher very calmly fought off all her blows. He was in complete control of the situation. Everything was under his control. The girl had a very serious face. She wanted to show everything she could do. This fight meant a lot to her. The teacher behaved very confidently. He behaved well and calmly in battle. Everything was under his control. It's time to show the teacher my signature kicks, the girl thought. He shouldn't think that I'm a weak opponent. I expect new blows from you. Let's show. Show me everything you can do. Do not be shy. The teacher said loudly to the girl and smiled. For a second it seemed that everything around had frozen. The teacher was in control of the situation. It seemed that his eyes were burning from this fight. The girl ran and jumped towards the teacher. She wanted to give him her signature blow. There was anger and rage in this girl's eyes. The face was tense to the limit. The girl screamed loudly and struck the teacher with her signature blow with her iron sword. It was like being in slow motion of a movie. She flew like a bird with this sword in her hands. The sound of metal scraping sounded in the air. Sparks from the metal flew in different directions. Dust rose. Everyone stood and watched what was about to happen. Everything froze and became quiet. Dust began to disperse across the ground. 
Only one teacher was visible. The dust has almost cleared. Everyone saw a girl kneeling in front of the teacher. She was simply exhausted. The people from the restaurant froze. They watched this battle unfold. But when it was over, they were afraid because their friend was invisible. The teacher won, the boy shouted loudly. Songbin sweated a little, as if he, and not the teacher, was in this battle. You were very worried about the teacher. Do you think she's alive? said one girl. Maybe it's time for us to run away from this place? a second girl asked. I met a very brave opponent in this battle, the teacher said. I'm pleasantly surprised. I lost. But I lost to the great warrior. Thank you, master, for your master class. It was a good lesson for me, the girl said. The main thing is that you drew a conclusion from this struggle. You realized your mistakes. You fought me bravely, even a little daring. But it's good. You know how to fight well. I wonder where you got these skills and abilities from. I have not seen such a kung fu technique for a very long time, the teacher said. You are a worthy opponent. The main thing is that you understand that your strength needs to be directed in the right direction. Everything should be for the benefit of good. It was an honor to fight alongside you. This was a great chance to learn good techniques and self-control. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for not punishing us for our bad deeds. The girl spoke. Stop apologizing. I'm tired of it. The teacher began to be indignant. Spare me your apologies. All have forgotten. It was a decent fight between two competitors. No more, no less, the teacher said. If I had money, I would give it to you. If I could award you an order or medal, I would do it right now. You are a very worthy warrior. Master, is it really over? People who watched this fight asked each other. The teacher was very calm. He wasn't even tired. It seemed like nothing happened. Are you talking about orders and medals? This is interesting. But that doesn't interest me at all, the teacher said. I used to be interested in this when I was young. I fought and fought for the title and the reward. The teacher said, and now I'm not so young anymore. I already have everything you're talking about. Now I'm just passing on my experience, the teacher said. So you are the owner of this title, the girl said. The title of the world's strongest man on earth. Yes, that's exactly you, the girl said. I didn't understand this right away, the girl said. You're a legend. It seems to me that the title is not your main advantage, the girl said. You're right. My main reward is that I have a school. I teach how to become not only a warrior, but also a real person. My dignity. This means that good must always defeat evil, the teacher said. My God, it's simply amazing. These words are worthy of applause. People from the restaurant screamed. I'm sure it was a good lesson for you, the teacher said. You should understand people better. You are absolutely right, master, the girl said. You showed me a good lesson. You are a good man. I want to become your student. Is this possible? I have too many students, the teacher replied. I don't know if I have enough time for you. Just recently, I took on a new student. By the way, he is behind me. This is the young man who sits and writes in a notebook, the teacher said. At this moment, the boy sat and wrote down the name of the kung fu techniques that his teacher used. Boy Song Bin, at this moment, was drawing various techniques that the teacher used. Boy, answer, are you my student or not? The teacher asked loudly. Song Bin raised his hand up with a satisfied face. Yes, yes, of course, the boy answered. I am a student of this great master. I'm very proud. This boy is great. He watches me and writes down everything he sees. Everything I teach, he writes down. Teacher, it seems to me that my notes will soon be able to be collected altogether. It will be possible to publish a whole book. Many poor children will be able to learn from this book of martial arts. This is great, the boy said. Master, will you accept me as your student? I promise you that I won't let you down. 
I will also write down everything you do and say, the girl said. It seems to me that you have more than just a notebook. This already looks like a scientific textbook on martial arts. I didn't even think about it, the boy said. But there is truth in your words. Everything I saw and heard under the teacher is written down here. Plus, there are drawings. Sorry, but today I will tell you no. I am no longer taking students. We didn't meet very well. So I say no. The teacher said, I understood. No means no. I think if we had met well, then everything could have been different, the girl said. Night was falling. It was already very late. The moon shone very brightly and illuminated almost the entire sky. My boy. If you're done, then let's get out of here, the teacher said. Okay, I agree, the boy answered. The girl really wanted to become a student of this wonderful man, a master of his craft and a great warrior. But she was refused. Of course, anger filled her. The fact that the teacher didn't take her was her fault in the first place. The girl turned around and slowly began to walk away. Her friends and girlfriends looked after her. I would like to meet this master again. Maybe someday I'll have a second chance. And he will take me to him, the girl said to her friend. I would really like this. This teacher is worthy of respect. He is a true master of his craft. Damn, I had such a great chance. Become a student of a great kung fu master. It's my own fault for what happened. I just can't be angry enough with myself. Out loud, the girl said, night has come. It was very dark in the forest. The road was illuminated only by the moon. The teacher and the boy moved forward along the road. A new beautiful sunny day has arrived. Our heroes set off on a journey by sea. Wow, what a beauty. The boy spoke enthusiastically. He stood on the deck of the ship and looked at the sea, at the mountains, at the birds. It was absolutely amazing. He had never seen the sea in his life. Beauty continued to admire boy. The splashes of water and the sound of the sea overwhelmed the boy's delight. Not far from the boy on the deck stood a teacher. He stood and looked into the distance. He probably also admired nature. The boy was surprised because his teacher was dressed completely differently. Now he looked like the leader of a large clan. The teacher stood silently on the deck of the ship and looked into the distance. His hair was secured with a ribbon. He was dressed in a long, beautiful robe. How are you doing? The boy asked. He tells me that there is seasickness. What do you think, teacher? Am I already sick? The boy asked. No, the teacher answered. No. Are you sure this is accurate? So I'm healthy. That's great. Hooray, the boy rejoiced. Today all ships are sailing to the big city. It's also good here, the teacher said. The teacher and the boy stood on the deck of the ship and looked at the sea. You must be able to listen to nature. It calms you down, the teacher said. The boy took out his notebook and pen. Turn on and repeat. Please, I'll write it down in my notebook, the boy said. Nature allows you to be alone with yourself. Nature calms and puts everything in its place. Repeated teacher. The boy Songbin wrote down all these expressions and sayings. It seemed to him that this was a real philosophy of life. You must learn to hear nature. She can teach you and suggest a lot. Remember this, the teacher said. Of course I'll remember this. But I'd better write it down for myself to read. It will be more reliable this way, the boy said. I have a lot of enemies on this earth. There are simply people whom I punished for bad deeds. And now they hold a grudge against me. They really want to take revenge on me. The teacher said, Enemies? What does it mean to have many enemies? How much is this a lot? Three? Ten? Fifty? Teacher, let's be more specific. I want to know exactly how many enemies there are. We need to understand the scale of the tragedy. I want to know what lies ahead. The boy said, I'll tell you the truth, my boy. I didn't count my enemies said the teacher did not continue to look at the sea. I wonder if my notebook is enough for me to write everything down for you, teacher, the boy said in fear. If your notebook runs out, you'll just have to remember everything.
Calmly and calmly the teacher answered. The ship on which the teacher and the boy were sailing sailed into the bay and sailed to the shore. They sailed to the big city. There were a lot of houses there. But unfortunately the weather was very bad. It was raining heavily. Songman sat down on the floor and began to look at all his notebooks in which he took notes. There were a lot of them. He laid out all the notebooks on the floor around him. The boy looked at his notes and was pleasantly surprised. A whole book could actually be written from this material. The boy especially liked his drawings. It seemed very interesting. He drew various stances, movements, and strikes in martial arts. Evening came. The teacher suggested going to training. The teacher liked to do training in the evening or at night. My boy, now I will show you how to fight while holding a sword with both hands, the teacher said. The teacher began to perform various kung fu techniques and movements. The boy tried to write quickly everything he sees. Can you keep up with me? Did you write everything down? The teacher asked the boy. Write in such a way that everyone can read it later. The handwriting should be beautiful. Yes, teacher, I can do everything, the boy answered. I try to write beautifully and legibly to make it clear. The teacher took the notebook and began to read everything that the boy wrote. You know, this is very good. The teacher praised the boy. Well done. You clearly have talent as a writer. This is very rare today. The teacher continued to praise the boy. You express your thoughts beautifully. It is beautifully written and most importantly understandable. Yes, this is 100% talent. Well done. Well done. The teacher said praise. Focus on the little things in your notes. Every detail must be described, the teacher said. You can see for yourself that you already understand Kung Fu. You can say that you are an expert. The teacher continued talking. I understood you. The more I describe everything you do during a fight, the easier it will be for those people who watch and read this to understand, the boy said. The boy realized that he was good at writing. He reread his notes. He was very interested. He read it like a book. There's just one thing I can't understand. Why can't we do without a fight? Why can't the problem be resolved peacefully? I asked myself a question, boy. The boy lay and looked at his hand. He imagined how, instead of the pen with which he writes notes in a notebook, there is a large iron sword in this hand. It has stopped raining outside. The weather became beautiful and clear. The sky was blue and the sun was shining very brightly. The people of the city went out to walk. The weather was very good for walking. Songbin also went out into the city for a walk. It was very hot and he took an unusual fan with him. The boy was walking around the city to meet different people. It was hot and stuffy, so he constantly waved his fan. The boy went for a walk in the park. It wasn't so hot there anymore. He stood and looked at the trees. He was very interested because he had never been here. Then Songbin came to the forest. It was nice in the forest. It was cool and even very fresh in the forest. Suddenly, an unfamiliar girl appeared on the road. She had long, beautiful hair and very beautiful clothes. When the unfamiliar girl came closer to the boy, it turned out that she had a sword sticking out of her belt. Perhaps she is a samurai or a kung fu master, the boy thought. He felt a little scared. It was just the two of them in the forest, but the girl was very beautiful. Good afternoon, young man, the stranger said. Can you tell me which road I can take to get to the city, the girl asked. Songbin was a little confused. It seemed to him that he fell in love at first sight. You need to go straight along this road, and then you will go straight into the city. The boy said to the girl, Thank you, you are so sweet. Thank you. You are a very sweet and kind young man. This is rare now, the girl said, and she went. Songbin was left alone on this road. He turned and looked into the distance as the girl left. He really liked her. The boy came to the city. I went to a cafe to eat. He decided to rest a little. Songbin sat down at the table, folded his hands on it, put his hands on it, and lowered his head. And I got upset. Why didn't I tell her anything? Why didn't I even meet? 
I'm a fool, the boy said. A waiter approached the boy with a plate. Here's your food, young man. This is what you ordered, the waiter said. Bon appetit. Thank you, the boy said to the waiter. It was a very tasty vegetable salad with seafood. A teacher entered the cafe. The boy was sitting at the table and eating his salad. Eat without being distracted, the teacher said. You should eat well today because you will need your strength today, the teacher said. I think tonight will be a difficult night. Clearly something could happen. I have this feeling, the teacher said. What does a difficult night mean? I don't understand, the boy asked. I generally don't like going somewhere and training with you at night. Night has come. The teacher and the boy got into the cart and drove off. Did they travel for a long time? The road was long. The teacher and the boy arrived at their destination. They stood near large, long steps that rose upward. Thinking about the teacher, the boy began to climb up these steps. There were a lot of steps, and it seemed that they would never end. The boy is very tired. Sweat dripped from his face. The boy had practically no strength. The teacher boy climbed to the very top of the steps. A very beautiful view opened before them. As the boy said amazingly here, they stood at the very top of the mountain. Below them was the city in which they lived. They looked at it and admired it. I really wanted you to climb to this peak with me, the teacher said to the boy. It's important for me. An unfamiliar man with a beard appeared in front of the teacher and the boys in front. It seemed that he was many years old. Have you really come, Kung Fu Master? said the man with the beard. Long time no see. Many years have passed since our last meeting with you, said the man with the beard. The old man's gaze was very unfriendly. So this is fate. This means that it was not destined to meet again, the man said. Who is this young man? Who is this boy next to you? The man asked. Hello, my name is Songbin. I am a student of a Kung Fu master. I also always follow him, attending all trainings and master classes. The main thing is that I write everything down in a notebook. Everything I see, all the exercises, all the movements, the whole fight that the master conducts. Who's that hiding behind your back? The teacher asked the man. This boy is my student. I recently took him to study with me, the man said. Hello, said the boy. I am truly a student. Are you the same Kung Fu master who stripped my teacher of his title? The student asked. Yes, it happened. I hope your teacher told you the truth. How was it really? The teacher said. He told me that you ruined his life. This is the main thing I remember, the student said. I see your student has a small mentality. I would even say too stupid. The teacher said loudly, What offends us? The student asked his teacher, I think we should answer. It seems to me that we must tolerate this rudeness. Teacher, get there, the student said. Teacher, I propose to fight to the death, and may the best man win. You must take revenge, the student said. Take and hold my cane. Stand aside and don't interfere. This is adult stuff, the man said. I was waiting for you, and you came. You did the right thing. You must answer according to your deserts. Today I'll show you who's boss, said the man. I told you that tonight would be a hard night, the teacher said to the boy. Just don't touch my student, the man asked the teacher. The elderly man began to take out his sword. It was clear from his gaze that he was serious. The teacher also took out his large iron sword. The sun's rays reflected from his blade. I already showed you once, old man, who's in charge here, the teacher said, holding a sword in his hands. It was too long ago to be true, the old man said. The old man held the sword confidently in his hands. The teacher and the old man stood opposite each other. They looked into each other's eyes. They held their swords in their hands. Well, teacher, be careful, the boy shouted loudly. Show your offender all your strength, the student shouted loudly. The teacher and the old man ran towards each other. They ran with all their might. When they met, a fight ensued. Everything was very serious. It was not for nothing that the teacher said that today would be a difficult night. Each of them was good at their job. They were good with weapons and good at techniques. Then the rivals made eye contact. 
There was anger and hatred for each other in their eyes. They struck harder and harder each time. It was a real fight. The initiative passed from one to another. It was unclear who might win and who would lose. The grinding and clanking of metal could be heard throughout the forest. Sparks from the metal flew in different directions. Crossing their swords once again, they looked at each other. It's better to give up right away, the old man said to the teacher, and you are the same as you were before, just as arrogant and daring. The old man said and struck, thanks for the compliment. So I haven't changed at all, you say? The teacher shouted and returned the blow with his own blow. It seems to me that you have become much better. The old man said to the teacher, Certainly, now I fight only on the side of good. I am proud of this. This is my mission, the teacher answered. The teacher began to strike one blow after another. The force of the blow was simply off the charts. It seemed as if he was cutting the air with his sword. It's your business for whom to fight, the old man said, and you fight really well. The battle continued again. This had already been going on for two whole hours. Nobody wanted to give in. They beat each other with swords. Each one threw their signature punches. Then the old man did a magic trick. He jumped high into the sky and hovered. Hey, old man, did you go to heaven on your own? The teacher shouted to the old man. I am very glad that I taught you a lot as a child. The old man said to the teacher, You were my best student. Don't put your teeth on me. What you're talking about happened too long ago. You yourself went over to the side of evil, the teacher said. The wig teacher continued to fight with their iron swords. The sound of metal was heard throughout the forest. The fight continued. Nobody wanted to give up. Everyone wanted to win. You betrayed me when you went over to the evil side, the teacher shouted loudly. I worked for those who paid me well. I don't care if it's good or evil, the old man said. You stopped me from continuing my business. In the last fight, you stripped me of my rank and title as the best kung fu fighter. All this time I have been storing up anger towards you. You made it so that no one respects me now. I don't deserve this, the old man said. I had my own school. I had a lot of students from different parts of the world. Now all this is gone. The old man was indignant. The teacher jumped up, hovered in the air at the level of the old man. He knows how to do that, too. The battle began to continue in the air, right in the sky. They fought with swords, not yielding to each other. You yourself destroyed everything you had. The teacher told the old man, You're the only one to blame for this. The old man stopped and thought. He thought about the words his student had spoken to him. Are you ready to continue the fight or give up? I can give in to you a little. I respect age, the teacher said. Yes, I'm an old man. I still wore a lot. Appearances are deceptive. All the strength is within me. It is too late. It's time to end this fight. The teacher swung his sword hard. Everything around froze. The teacher took a running start, jumped and flew up high. His clothes flew open in the air. At that moment, a strange white light began to emanate from the old man's sword. The sword glowed and emitted a bright white light. The whole sky glowed with white, bright light. And then the whole forest was illuminated with this white light. I hope you understand that I can still do it. I have super strength. I could use it right at the beginning of the fight. I just wanted to see what you could do. I looked and that's enough. The teacher said, I can do a lot too. Even things you didn't teach me. The teacher took the sword, raised it above his head and ran towards the old man to attack him. The old man had a lot of strength. He was ready to continue this fight for many more hours. The teacher began to swing his iron sword around himself. A strong wind began to appear. The teacher continued to spin the sword around himself harder and faster. A real tornado appeared around him. It was already very late. Night has come. A bright moon would shine on it. Teacher, I don't understand what's going on, the boy screamed loudly. He was a little scared. The wind has calmed down. The boy saw an old man lying on the ground. In the distance, his teacher stands safe and sound. No, not this. The old man's disciple shouted loudly. The student became very angry. His eyes filled with rage and anger. 
He was ready to kill everyone who stood in his way. I'll kill you, the student shouted. He grabbed the sword and ran to fight with the teacher. The teacher used his signature roundhouse kick and the boy flew to the side. He didn't press anything on the ground and groaned in pain. It's too early for you to fight me, the teacher told this boy. An old man lay silently on the ground. He didn't make a single sound. It looked like he was dead. After some time, the old man began to raise his head. He looked around. Quietly, he began to rise from the ground. Thank you for not killing this boy. He's still too stupid. Ambition overwhelms him, the old man said. Today I had the honor of fighting with you. You are a worthy warrior. You exceeded all my expectations. The old man knelt down. He began to ask the teacher for forgiveness. Forgive me for everything, the old man said. The wounded old man began to speak to the teacher. Please fulfill my request. I beg you, look after this boy, my student. I beg you. I want him to make sense so that he becomes a man. The old man spoke and pointed to his student who was lying on the ground. I think this is too arrogant a request from you. Your student, I don't like it, the teacher said. You lost the fight. Why should I educate your student? I disagree, the teacher said. Your impudence, old man, is just off the charts. I see that time and actions teach you nothing, the teacher said. Boy, come closer to me, the old man said to Songbin. Are you talking to me? And the boy asked the old man. Songbin got up and went to the old man. The boy sat down next to the old man. What's your name, boy? asked the old man. My name is Songbin, the boy answered. You have a rare but beautiful male name. I see you are a very smart boy. Thank you. I just love reading and writing, the boy answered. The old man asked the boy to teach his student to read and write, and helped make him a man, a kind person. But I'm still learning myself. I'm a simple student. I'm not a teacher. You can try, though, the boy said. The old man hugged the boy's hands and thanked him. Do everything in your power, the old man asked. I believe that you will succeed. Thanks again. I have one more request to ask of you. Please bring my sword. The old man said to the boy. The sunbin boy approached the sword, which was sticking out in the ground. He carefully took it by the handle and began to pull it out. It turned out to be difficult to pull the sword out of the ground. The sword was quite heavy. The boy was holding the old man's sword in his hands. The sword glowed white. But there was one more strange thing. The sword was very cold, as if made of ice. This sword suits you. With him you seem more mature and stronger. He makes you look like a real warrior, the old man said. I think it's too heavy for me. The boy said to the old man. The boy Songbin continued to look at this interesting sword. He thought he was magical. Your sword is very beautiful. I liked him. The boy said to the old man, Now he's yours, my boy, said the old man. What? How? Can't be. Exactly? Is this sword mine now? The boy enthusiastically asked the old man. The teacher stood and looked at everything that was happening. He recalled that as a child he was also given a sword. I give you this sword, the old man said. I see great potential in you. You have a great future to become a good warrior. Honest wars, like your teacher, but this sword is mincemeat. I cannot accept such an expensive gift. The boy said to the old man, Tree, don't be shy, now he's yours. Don't forget my request. Look after my boy, make him a man, the old man said. To be honest, you are worthy of this sword. I was thinking of giving it to my student but he's still too stupid for that. Song Bin stood and looked, first at the old man, then at this boy who was still lying on the ground. Boy Song Bin was very happy. He had never had a real personal sword before. And now there is a large adult legendary sword, which is even magical. The teacher boy went his way about his business. They were leaving the forest. The fight was over. The old man approached his student, took his head, and began stroking his head with his palm. You are still just a child, my boy, the old man said. You have a lot to learn in life, especially respect your elders. You have to grow up. You have your whole life ahead of you. 
You can't be so angry and cruel towards strangers. You are my last student. To be honest, I am very attached to you, the old man said. You are a brave boy, said the old man. But I will repeat myself. You still have a lot to learn. To become a real warrior and a real person, thanks to today's fight and today, I realized how wrong I was. I have done a lot of bad things in my time. It was very late, it was deep at night. The moon was shining very brightly in the sky. The entire sky was strewn with white stars. It's strange, but I've never paid attention to the world around me before. It turns out that the sky's moon and stars can be so beautiful and delight me, the old man said. The old man sat next to the boy, thought and looked into the distance at the sky. The old man continued to sit next to his student, calming him down. He bandaged all his wounds so that it would not hurt him, so in the middle of the forest, on the top of the mountain. There were two people. An old man is a kung fu master and his last student. The teacher and the boy Songbin were off doing their own thing. The main thing was not to go astray and choose the right road to get out of this forest. The next day came. The teacher and student came to the holy city. In this city, grief happened and the king died. A lot of people came to say goodbye to the king. Nobody knew what happened. Great mourning was declared in the city. All residents considered it necessary to come and say goodbye to the king. The inhabitants of the city loved their king very much. Therefore, absolutely every resident came to say goodbye to him at that moment. Two-man guards stood guarding the house. They didn't let anyone near him. A white sword glowed in the distance. The sword that the old man gave. Then the battle began. The white iron sword cut everything in its path. Sparks flew in different directions. This was the dream that the boy Songbin had. The dream was very bright and rich, almost as if in reality. His white glowing sword was everywhere. He was constantly in the frame. In his dream, Songbin fought with enemies. His brand new sword was his best assistant in battle. A powerful, beautiful handle that was comfortable to grip. A sword blade that constantly emitted white light. The boy woke up. He rose up in bed and sat down. He was very frightened by his dream. It was very realistic. The dream could not leave his head. Song Bin constantly remembered him. The boy turned to the side and looked at his lying sword. It was with this sword that he fought in his dream. Song Bin got up from the bed, walked over and picked up his beautiful ancient sword. It glowed white. Morning has come. The weather outside was wonderful. There was almost no wind. Clouds slowly floated across the sky. Boy Song Bin walked down the stairs into the living room. It was a big red long staircase. In the living room, the boy saw his teacher drinking his favorite drink, aromatic tea. How did you sleep, teacher? The student asked. Badly, the teacher answered. I also slept very poorly today. I had nightmares. I dreamed about my sword, and I dreamed about your fight. So we both didn't get enough sleep today, the teacher said. Drink tea with me and you will feel better. The teacher said and offered a cup of tea to his boy. Teacher, I constantly think about my sword. I have never had such a gift before. Suddenly I'm not worthy of this yet. You are a good smart boy. You are well brought up and literate. You were given a legendary sword, so take care of it. You wanted to become a real warrior, right? Now you have a sword, you have already become one. Practically? The teacher smiled. The day has come. The sun was shining brightly and the weather was very good. The teacher and the boy went to the city on their own business. They walked along a shopping street. Teacher and boy Song Bin. We came to a very beautiful house. A servant met them at the threshold of the house. Good afternoon, come in, said the servant. Teacher and boy. They went into the house and sat down at a table on the summer veranda. I will inform the lady that you have arrived in one minute, said the servant. It is very beautiful in here. <laughs> very beautiful house and the surrounding nature is also very beautiful. <laughs> the boy said to his teacher. The boy opened his eyes wide. It was clear from his gaze that he had seen something very beautiful. A very beautiful girl appeared in front of them. 
She had a very beautiful hairstyle and an unusual blue dress. Good afternoon, Lord, said the lady. Good afternoon, the teacher answered. I know that you publish books, madam. You might be interested in what my student is doing, the teacher said. The boy was very upset. The teacher did not warn where and to whom they were going. Does this young man really have such great talent? asked the lady. Madam, I just write down everything I see in my notebook. All the battles my teacher fought are recorded there. All the training is there, and even drawings, said boy. The servant brought out a lot of delicious dishes, put them on the table, and they began to dine. Yes, my boy records all my training, master classes, and my fight. He definitely has talent. The teacher spoke. Talent is good. So far I only see that he has a very good appetite. The lady laughed. Let me pour you some cold lemonade. It will be easier for you to chew your food. Smiling, the lady said to the boy. The boy was very embarrassed. He picked up the cup and extended it towards the lady. Songbin held his mug of lemonade in his hands. His hands were shaking very much from fear and excitement. Lemonade spilled on the floor. Are you afraid of me? The lady asked the boy. Am I really that scary? The lady laughed. In fact, the lady was a very beautiful girl. The boy sweated from excitement. To avoid spilling the lemonade, he held the cup with both hands. Suddenly the boy Songbin hiccuped. It was either fear or carbonated lemonade that was to blame. He blushed with shame. Songbin ran to the side. He stood near the pillar, turned away from everyone. What are you doing? Are you okay? The lady asked the boy. Songbin turned to the lady and didn't know what to say. He just stood there and smiled. He was embarrassed and funny. You are a very funny young man, Madam said. You're cute and shy. Now this is very rare. I definitely need to look at the notes in your notebooks. Perhaps I will help publish a book, Madam said. The boy just stood there, looked at his mistress and fell in love. Will you help me? True, true? The boy asked the lady. Songbin and the lady were talking about future plans. A teacher stood in the country and watched them. He was very pleased. It is very good that they found a common language and became friends. The teacher thought, Did you really write down everything you heard and everything you saw of your teacher? The boy's mistress asked. Yes, I have a lot of notebooks with my notes, the boy answered. You have to be very literate in order to make such notes. Well done. What do you say, madam? Will the boy be any good? The teacher asked. I'm sure he has a great future. He is very smart for his age. Of course, there will be some sense, madam said. I'll look at his notes and try to help you. Perhaps a very good book will come out of all this. She will talk about the philosophy of Kung Fu and your exploits as a master. I'm not a hero. There is no need to talk about this. The teacher laughed. I have a talent for martial arts, and my student turned out to have a talent for writing. You are lucky that you found each other in this world, Madam said. You compliment each other like yin yang. The teacher became embarrassed for the first time. He had not listened to praise addressed to him for a long time. He was pleased and smiled. You are a good person. This can be seen immediately with the naked eye. The lady said to the teacher, the teacher looked at the lady with completely different eyes. He hadn't received so many compliments from a girl in a long time. They entered the room and discussed the most necessary and important details. Great cooperation awaited them ahead. My student really has good talent. Not everyone can write, the teacher said. This is amazing. Be friends and stay close to each other. I already told you that you need each other. A great future is important, Madam said. I'm in such a good mood that I would like to play my favorite song for you. I hope you don't mind, Madam said. Of course not. The teacher answered. The lady began to play a musical instrument, and the melody scattered in the wind. It was a great song. Wonderful music. It was time to say goodbye. The lady led her guests outside. I told them goodbye and see you again. The boys' teachers went back home. It was evening outside when the boys' teachers left. The lady stood on the porch of her house and looked at them. 
Why didn't you tell me about the lady before? The boy asked the teacher. Don't know. You didn't ask, and I didn't tell. I don't know what to answer. I just didn't tell you that's all, the teacher said. I liked her. She is very beautiful. I have never seen such beautiful ones in my life. Isn't she a pretty teacher? The boy asked. Yes, she's beautiful, you're right. But she is much older than you, so pull yourself together and don't dream. The teacher said, The sun was setting below the horizon. There was a beautiful red sunset in the sky. It's already getting dark. I suggest going outside and getting a good workout. The teacher said to his boy, It was really already dark outside. The teacher trained and showed various techniques. The boy sat and wrote all this down in his notebook. I hope you managed to write everything down, my boy. The teacher asked Song Bin. Of course I managed everything. I even managed to sketch your techniques in my notebook, the boy said. This is amazing. We've had a good workout. Now we can go home and rest, the teacher said. At home, the boy lay down on his bed, looked at the ceiling and dreamed. He remembered the beautiful lady lady who met them and promised to help him publish a book. Then the boy lay down on the floor around him. He laid out his notes. He laid out his notebooks, which contained all the notes about his teacher's training. The boy sat and reread what he had written. He always did this in order to understand correctly whether he was writing or not. Will this be interesting to the reader? This is how the boy reread most of his notebooks. It seemed to him that he knew, yes, as if everything that was written there by heart. He read carefully. Now through his eyes were the memories of those events recorded in his notebook. It was delicious. The boy laid out notebooks around him in chronological order. He wanted to get his notes in order. He remembered what events happened and when. I looked for them in my notebooks and laid them out in order. On top, he placed notebooks in front of him, which contained smart and philosophical statements from his teacher. Below were notebooks with notes from master classes conducted by his teacher. So he took one notebook after another, looked through it, reread it, and put it in the right pile. Super. From these notebooks, a whole story about the philosophy of Kung Fu is created. This is very cool. You praised yourself, boy. He took a brush and began to sign each notebook. He signed what events they related to. Thus, the boy signed his notebooks. Signed the events that are in them. Super turns out just great. Pretty boy, he said out loud. In total, I have five different stories about my teacher. So many interesting things, just great. At this moment, the teacher was reading one of the notebooks that his student had written. A lot of interesting things were written there. Do I talk so much about the philosophy of Kung Fu? The teacher asked. Yes, but this is my shortened version. The boy laughed. Some of your stories are too long. Some are very small. The teacher spoke aloud and flipped through the pages of the notebook. This is not a book. These are just my notebook entries. The boy laughed. When the lady publishes my book, it will be a masterpiece. I see you are becoming an expert in this field. Commendable. I'm proud of you, my boy. Did you really like it, teacher? The boy asked loudly. I want everyone to know about your professionalism and your exploits. Even the whole world, Songbin said. Thank you, my boy. You are really very kind. It was not for nothing that I chose you and took you as my student. Every evening, every night, the teacher went to training, took his student with him, who wrote down everything he saw in his notebook. Then, the next day they sat together at the table. We drank delicious hot aromatic tea. They asked each other questions and discussed what the boy wrote in his notebook. The next night came, the teacher again went to train and show everything he could do. Songbin sat and watched carefully. I wrote down all the details in my notebook. This is how every evening passed and every night of teacher and student. One day the teacher was sitting and cleaning his iron sword. Entering the room, Songbin noticed this. Teacher, what's going on? The boy asked. Are you getting ready for some reason? Admit it quickly. I should know. The teacher sat silently and sharpened his iron sword. He wanted it to be as spicy as possible. My boy, 
We have been in this city for too long. I have a bad feeling. I could be tracked in this city. My premonition never lets me down. So just trust me. I feel like something bad is about to happen. The same man who met them at the restaurant appeared at the door. He had a very strange appearance and a pale face. The waiter called the teacher over. They talked for a very long time. The waiter whispered in the teacher's ear. The waiter continued talking to the teacher. This all happened very quietly, so as not to be heard. Unexpectedly, the match was very surprising. At the moment, he did not understand at all what was happening. Turn it on, he handed the boy a box, a square box. She was small in size, but in a box. Let's agree this way. You must keep this box and its contents. But if you feel really bad, eat what is in this box, it will save your life, the teacher said. Don't ask me a word again, said the teacher. I said everything. The teacher was very serious. There was sadness and anxiety on his face. He hasn't been like this for a long time. Learn what's going on. What's the matter? Why do I need it? Where did you get this from? I don't understand at all. I'll tell you later. It's a very long story. Just save everything. Let it be yours. It should save your life. Evening came. The teacher and his student Songbin walked along the beach along the seashore. Teacher, maybe you can tell me what happens in the end? I'm a little scared, the boy said. There is one person I really need to meet. I don't know about this meeting. Or everything will go peacefully. Or not, the teacher said. On the beach, the teacher met a man. He was wearing brown clothes. The boy had never seen him before. Hello, Kung Fu Master, said a stranger. So we met. I want to remind you that you owe me, if you remember what I'm talking about. We continue to say stranger. I'm not alone today. I also have students. This is one of them. This is my best student, the teacher said. His name is Sun Bin. Soon I will know his name all over the world. Is your boy better than my student? Look what they look like. Mine is much taller and stronger than yours, said a stranger. I taught him everything I know. This is my best student. He is very brave and has wielded a sword for a long time. Hey, you old man. Talking to my teacher a little more politely, the student shouted. Wait, don't shout, said the stranger. I see nothing is changing, the teacher said. What kind of students are you like? The children were not allowed to speak. I take this as an insult. The teacher got very angry, took his sword, and stuck it in the ground. Beams of energy began to scatter in different directions across the ground. I'm starting to take notes for you, teacher. Just be very careful. The boy shouted loudly. You are just great, my boy. If possible, you can even make a drawing. Our fight. I just feel like there's going to be a fight. No? It was just my young student who overdid it a little. He's not that well brought up yet, not understanding what can be said and what cannot be said. It's your problem. My student is very well brought up. He is literate. He knows how to fight, write poetry. This is my student. He doesn't know how to do all this, but I see potential in him. He can learn anything. But for now, there is a very big one. In fact, I am very capable, said the red-haired boy. For me, we are the teacher. That's everything. For him, I will kill anyone who gets in his way, the red-haired boy said. The stranger immediately pulled out his sword from under his robe and began to swing it and attack the teacher. This is disgusting and vile, the teacher shouted. He took out his sword and began to overtake. He parried the stranger's blows. I remember your style. You always like to strike unexpectedly. This is vile, insidious, and unmanly, the teacher said. Trust me, not only will I drink, but also my student. He can do a lot. The stranger laughed. The boy Sunbin continued to write everything down for his teacher. He tried not to miss a single word. Sunbin boy, I really hoped that everything would be fine today. No one will die and the battle will be easy. I'm burning with hatred for you. The stranger shouted loudly. He had crazy eyes. He clenched his teeth tightly. I suggest you also write down my movements and my exploits. 
said the stranger to his red-haired student. I am not a writer. I am a warrior. The red-haired student shouted loudly. He began to confidently pick up his sword. The red-haired student took up his sword. He took it out. It began to glow with white light. This was very unexpected for everyone. The red-haired student held his sword by the hilt and showed everyone how it glowed with white light. Boy Song Bin was simply shocked. He didn't expect it to be so serious. He didn't expect the sword to glow. Perhaps he is magical, the boy thought. At this time, the red-haired student was making his notes. There were very few of them. He painted them with red paint. That's just terrible, the teacher said. Your student is not capable of anything. He is stupid and weak. He's not stupid. He has already started writing my memoirs. He records everything I do. This is dressed in history. I see you are very serious. I see you want a battle. For example, your student has long talked himself into the death penalty. You did a lot of bad things to me. I've been holding on to anger at you for a very long time. And today, that time has come, said a stranger. The teacher quickly took out his iron great sword. Did he take it in his right hand? He put all his energy into it. Come on, I'm waiting. Attack. Tell me what you don't like. The teacher spoke loudly to the stranger. I like the most important thing. You beat me in every way. Worst of all. The worst thing is that you have gone over to the side of good, said a stranger. We can fight you right now. We wouldn't want to do this in front of your student, said a stranger. Quickly give me your sword, said the stranger to his red-haired student. He took the sword from him. The offended red-haired student remained sitting on the floor. He held his sword in his teacher's hands. The boy did not understand what was happening. He saw these people for the first time. At first they wanted to fight. Now they are going to a truce. It seems to me, my boy, that he has a desire for us. Most likely it has something to do with you. I want you to teach my red-haired student to read and write. This request is not for you, Kung Fu Master. This is a request to your student. A stranger spoke. Please help me. I see you are a very smart boy said a stranger. You are the same age, you will find a common language. Song Bin and the red-haired student were sitting together on the summer terrace. They communicated with each other. How are you? How are you feeling? Are you okay? The boy Song Bin asked the red-haired student. Don't mess with me. I do not want to talk to you. Keep distance. Don't compare me to yourself. The red-haired student answered very rudely. Suddenly, the red-haired student stood up, straightened his hair, and straightened up. And instead of a boy, it turned out to be a beautiful girl. It's been a long time since I picked up my sword. Now that time has come. There is a reason for this. I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. If you have been waiting for this moment for a very long time, then come on and start attacking me. The teacher shouted loudly. I don't know just one thing. What do you want? We did not meet each other in a long time. Since then we have not crossed each other's paths. What's wrong? The teacher asked. I don't understand where your boy got this legendary sword. This is a family heirloom of the dynasty of kings. How did your boy get it? The stranger asked. I'll take him away! The stranger shouted loudly. He began to attack the teacher with his red-hot sword. The teacher was calm and waited for this blow. He parried the blows very easily, but a battle ensued. A serious battle ensued. The stranger attacked the teacher. The teacher fought back. Everything was very serious. I don't remember where I came to you, the teacher asked the stranger. Please remind me before I kill you. The stranger didn't like this and started attacking the teacher. Sparks and white light flew in different directions. The stranger held his sword in front of his face. It was red. He was like hot metal. There was a lot of warmth coming from him. A fight broke out again. The stranger tried to hit the teacher with his ball. Nothing worked for him. The teacher was in very good physical shape. 
the stranger continued to attack the teacher with his red hot ball. It was very warm around him from this heat. I don't understand this anger. Why are you angry? A long time ago, you and I decided all our questions. What do you need to answer now? The teacher said. Maybe you're just jealous of me? The teacher shouted loudly. You're doing the right thing because I'm better than you. Let's attack. I'm waiting for you. Let's see what you can do. The teacher continued talking. I don't understand where your boy got this legendary sword. This is a great royal dynasty. I do not understand. You shouldn't worry about that. This is our business, not yours. Therefore, defend yourself. Shouting loudly, the teacher took his sword with both hands. Now you will be finished. The stranger shouted loudly. You're in deep trouble. The stranger shouted loudly. Are you saying that your student got this sword just like that? The stranger shouted very angrily. He took out his red fire sword and ran to attack. He deserved it as a true warrior. The teacher answered, But that's none of your business. This is the business of our clan, our school. The teacher hit very hard and swung his large metal iron sword in different directions. The blows were very strong. The ringing rang throughout the forest. Two students, two young men sat on a bench looking at their teachers, at their kung fu teachers. They remembered and wrote down everything they did. Teacher, try to be more careful. Take care of yourself. I worry about you, remember, we need each other. Songbin shouted loudly. Okay, my boy, I won't repeat my movements and techniques. The main thing is to write down. The main thing is to have time to write everything down. Now we will finish this fight, and there will be nothing to write about. The stranger shouted loudly. In fact, he was very tired. Your boy is not worthy of this legendary sword. I'll just take it from you when I'm done with you. It won't be difficult. I will have the legendary magic sword. Mark my words. You are not worthy of him. And your boy. Moreover, he is unworthy of this sword. I don't care what you think. This is your personal opinion. My student and I are one whole, so defend yourself. The teacher shouted loudly. To be honest, I'm really tired of it. We need to end this matter. Either there will be pain or leave, the teacher said. I will not leave. You're in deep trouble. The stranger became very angry. His hair stuck out in different directions. The eyes were very large from madness. He was very angry. The stranger got angry, took his hand, and flew to attack the teacher. He wanted to deal with him once and for all. Come on, I'm waiting for you. The teacher shouted loudly. He was calm and in control of the battle situation. The stranger began to strike hard. His sword was on fire. It was a very strong blow, but the teacher endured everything. This was a brutal battle that lasted several hours. Nobody wanted to give in. Each of the opponents wanted to win. The men were not inferior to each other in this fight. With their iron swords, they fought like real warriors. The teacher pierced the stranger's body with his sword. The stranger began to lose strength. His face turned pale. Pain permeated his entire body. It seemed that this was it, the end. It was very unexpected. The dust that rose from the ground made it difficult to clearly see the entire battle. The boys jumped up from their bench. They didn't expect it to end so quickly. The teacher looked at his right palm. There was blood on it. Blood flowed and dripped directly onto the ground. The teacher did not feel any pain. At this time, the red-haired student grabbed his sword. He approached the boy. He grabbed him and presented his sword to his neck. You're finished, the red-haired student shouted. Boy, what are you doing? Stop. The teacher shouted loudly to the red-haired student. This is my revenge for my teacher. He is the best thing in my life. You are the best thing in your student's life. Therefore, his death will be just. The boy Songbin was very scared. He had never been in such a situation. He was never a hostage. It was scary and painful. A stream of blood flowed down his hand and trickled down his fingers. Drops of blood dripped directly onto the ground. This was more unpleasant. I'll kill him. I'm still there for my teacher. Everyone will know about this. 
I will become a famous warrior. The main thing is that I will take revenge. The student shouted loudly. The boy Songbin was very scared. He had never been in such a situation. What should I do? Tell me, teacher. The boy screamed loudly. Hold on, my boy, I'm close. I won't let you get hurt. The teacher shouted loudly. The offense is mine alone. I will avenge my teacher. I didn't turn off. The eyes were very serious. The expression on his face was frightened, but also serious. Songbin, hang in there. Do not be afraid of anything. Remember everything I taught you. The main thing is to understand that I am by your side and will not leave you. I want to inherit everything that my teacher had. The red-haired student screamed loudly, and a lot of money. Otherwise, I will kill him. Or is it worth nothing to you? Who shouted loudly the red-haired student? We, the teacher, told me, to become a real warrior, you need to kill. That time has come. Not sure if it's that simple? It's hard to kill. By the way, it's even harder for a warrior. You were taught wrong. Suddenly, the student made a sharp movement with his hand. He took a knife from his pocket and stuck it in the boy's shoulder. It was very mean. The boy Songbin grabbed the handle of the knife. He was in a lot of pain. At first, there was a painful shock. Then, Songbin shouted very loudly at the top of his lungs. It was very painful. The knife was sticking into his shoulder. He was bleeding. You said that I was not capable of anything. How do you like that? Didn't you expect this? You said that I was not capable of anything. The boy Songbin was bleeding. There was a knife sticking into his left shoulder. His strength began to leave him. The boy Songbin fell to the ground. He was bleeding and in great pain. His strength was leaving him. Some time has passed. The teacher sat next to him. Songbin opened his eyes and began to wake up. My hand hurts so much, the boy said. I wonder, teacher, why he hated you, but it was me who got it. Answer me, please. Your offender is not actually a boy, but a girl. I understood this immediately, the master said. And at that time, the girl stood near the lying body of her teacher. The girl knelt next to the body of her teacher. We got a potion in a bowl. It was reminiscent of an ancient ritual. The girl was on her knees, holding a bowl in her hands and saying prayers. She read these prayers in ancient languages. Teacher, what does it do? The student asked. This is an ancient ritual. Ritual of forgiveness. A ritual to take back your teacher's sword. There was complete silence. The girl prayed. The teacher and the boy looked at what was happening. Thank you very much for not disturbing me. I'm done, the red-haired girl said. Let's say goodbye. Did you get what you wanted? I hope so. Therefore, we can calmly, peacefully disperse. I'll just say one thing. Thank you so much for not killing my student. It would be stupid of you. It would be a stupid death, the teacher said. I know. Therefore, the blow was light. It was not fatal at all. I didn't want to kill him, the red-haired girl said. If I wanted to kill your student, believe me, his teacher would not be next to you now. The girl said so. The teacher listened to everything she told him. He turned around from Togo to walk. The boy Songbin stood and looked at the red-haired girl. It seems to me that we will meet again. The time just has to come. And believe me, our meeting will not be as friendly as today. My boy, let's get out of here. There's nothing for us to do here. The teacher ordered his student to follow him. Your student has rare blood. I felt it. Anyone else after my blow was already dead, and he is alive. Perhaps he has antibodies in his blood. That's the only reason he was able to stay alive. I have no other explanation. Or he has a superpower. Maybe he's even immortal. He's clearly not like everyone else. You are a failure like everyone else. So I made my choice and took him as my student. He's a good guy. Smart is the main thing the girl shouted after the boy. Stop. I have one thing for you. It should definitely be useful to you, the girl said. The boy Songbin turned to the girl. He didn't understand what she wanted. 
raise your hands up and catch. The girl screamed loudly. She threw a strange thing towards the boy. The boy caught the strange thing with one hand. It was reminiscent of the cup that is given at competitions for first place. The boy stood and looked at this thing in his hands. What is this, and why do I need it? The boy asked the girl. This is what should help you, should save you. This is the totem of immortality. This thing will protect you from illness and from mortal wounds. Just let her always be with you. Save it. She will save your life. Do I always need to carry this thing with me? The boy asked the red-haired girl. If you want to stay alive, then of course yes. The red-haired girl answered menacingly. The boy did not expect such a turn of events. He was excited, a little scared. None understood what had happened. At this time, there was a small sandstorm in the holy city. The weather was terrible. It was stuffy, and sand was flying all around in the wind. The city was still in mourning. Flags were lowered. Residents of the city gathered together to honor the memory of the deceased king. The whole city was insulted. Girls and women came to say goodbye to the king. Whole families came to the king's castle to honor the memory of the king. It was a difficult moment for the elite and for the entire city. One morning, Songbin woke up. He grabbed his left shoulder. It hurt a lot, and the hand practically did not move. He moved his hand left and right. It was therapeutic exercises. This is how he restored the motor abilities of his hand. The hand began to heal quickly, and it didn't hurt so much anymore. You're a girl. The boy constantly remembered the words of that red-haired girl who gave him a totem. At night, Sun Bin kept waking up. He had nightmares. This went on almost every night. Teacher, I don't understand why she gave me this totem. It resembles the handle of a combat sword, the boy said. It's your thing now. If you don't believe what that girl said, then you can just throw it away. Perhaps she just wanted to scare you? But this is up to you to decide, the teacher said to the boy. When the teacher boy was riding in a carriage, Songbin wanted to throw this unnecessary thing out the window. He didn't need this hotel. I probably won't throw away this totem. What if he really is magical? What if it comes in handy for me or the two of us? The boy said. Is this your thing? It's up to you to decide, my boy. Leave it if you want, the teacher said. These are your thoughts, your life, your responsibility. Only you are responsible for your actions. Nobody else, the teacher said. I know this sword hilt. It's been a long time since I saw her. She met me along the way. Don't throw it away. It really should help you in life. The boy looked at the teacher and listened to him carefully. The teacher spoke philosophical thoughts out loud. I understand you, teacher. Okay, the boy said. Then they rode in the carriage, looked at each other, and were silent. In the evening, the teacher and the boy arrived at a very interesting house. It looked like a big, powerful fortress. The boy walked up to the fence and began to look at everything he saw in front of him. There was very heavy fog. Songbin saw a very large and beautiful lake in front of him. A large mountain loomed on the horizon. Did you like this lake and mountains? The boy's teacher asked Songbin. Holy Lake is one of the largest lakes in this district. It's big, deep, and beautiful. You can admire them forever. You yourself wanted to come here? The boy asked. Yes, I wanted to. This is where I have to meet my friend. I'll introduce you to him soon. A man appeared in front of them. Good afternoon. I'm glad to see you, my friend, the man said. Are you going to fight again? The boy asked. No. It just so happened that I used to fight with everyone I met. Long time no see. Who is this with you? The man asked the teacher. This is my best student, the teacher answered. Good afternoon, mister, for the student of this Kung Fu master. My name is Song Bin. The friendly man looked at the boy. He had a very kind face. I'm your teacher's friend. We had to go through a lot together for a long time. We fought and fought back to back. The man spoke. You are also a warrior, my friend, the man asked the boy. It seems to me that you are still too young for this. This is my son. I am the king of the Zen dynasty, so he is my heir. 
After me, he will get everything I have. Hello, I'm very glad to see you all. In perfect health. It has been a long time since I visited the Zen dynasty, the teacher said. They stood on the street, exchanged pleasantries, and remembered what had happened to them before. I invite you to lunch, come in, said the king of the Zen dynasty. Thank you, but I refuse. We still have a lot of important things to do today. You can do everything in time, the teacher said. Why are you here? Then the secret will be revealed. It is very interesting to me. I know that I have enemies everywhere, every corner of this country. I came here for a reason, the teacher said. What is your mission here in this city? The king answered. I constantly come across weak opponents, and I want to keep myself in good physical shape. The teacher said, Do you want to have a sword fight with me? Doing good fight training? I understood you correctly. Everything is correct. To be the best. You need to fight the best. That's why I'm here. If you help me, I will be very grateful to you, the teacher said to the king. I don't mind. It's been a long time since I practiced with a combat sword in my hands, the man said. Such beautiful, interesting words, the boy said. He opened his notebook and began to write down everything he heard. Do you write down everything your teacher says? Asked the king's son. Of course, this is very interesting to me, the boy answered. The boys sat together and watched what would happen now. I'm very interested in what will happen now. I haven't seen my father fight for a long time. Father, be careful. You haven't practiced for a long time. Worried about his father, son? The teacher took out his large iron sword. He held it tightly with both hands. The king of the Zen dynasty also took out his sword. It was not that big and long, but very sharp. The men stood and looked into each other's eyes. There was tension in the air. A few seconds later, a battle began. It was a fight between two friends who haven't seen each other for a long time. They attacked each other. They jumped up and delivered their blows. The king of the Zen dynasty was in good physical condition. He was good with a combat sword. The men were not inferior to each other in this fight. They attacked and defended themselves. It's good that this is a friendly fight. It's good that they don't fight to the death, said Boy Songbin. This battle continued. They shouted at each other. Everything looked very natural. It was a good friendly fight. But from the outside, everything looked real. Each of the men showed their signature techniques and strikes. They honed their skills. They jumped up and threw their roundhouse kicks. It looked very impressive and beautiful. At this time, the boy was sitting and writing down everything in his notebooks. He didn't want to miss anything. Lucky you. You have a good student. Who writes down all your phrases and all your techniques? Boy Songbin, I watched this fight closely. He even tried not to blink so as not to miss anything. The boy was very focused. This was the first friendly fight he describes. Songbin wrote down the phrases and kung fu techniques that his teacher used in this friendly fight. My father is excellent at martial arts, said the king's son. It's a pity that my sister doesn't see this. My sister doesn't even know how brave and strong her father is. The son continued to talk. Do you have a sister? I did not know. I answered, Sun Bin Boy. The men continued to fight with their battle swords. It was a very beautiful fight. I also want to learn how to fight like my father, said, Son of the King's Dynasty. The boy was not distracted by conversations. He watched and followed the battle carefully. I tried to have time to write everything down. You always write down everything you see about your teacher, asked the son of the king's dynasty. Yes, I am always with my teacher. We are always together. I write down every training session and every fight that I see right away in a notebook. This fight is simply great. This is a friendly fight. There is a lot here that was not in other battles. Your father has a very interesting fighting style. He has excellent command of the ball. I've never seen this before, the boy said. To be honest, I have never seen this before either. This is the first time I've sat and watched my father fight with swords. The men continued their fight. They continued to throw various blows at each other, attack and defend. Looks like my teacher will win this fight, the boy said. 
but it seems to me that this fight will be a draw. In this fight, two friends fight. It is a friendly fight. There can be no winner or loser here, king of the Zen dynasty. I was very focused on this fight. He wasn't distracted by the boy's conversations. You are very stubborn, my friend. However, as always, the king told the teacher, you are in very good physical shape. Friend, even in a friendly fight, you don't give me a chance to win, said the king. I am very glad that you are in such physical shape. Apparently, you train a lot. Yes, it is. I train almost every evening. Even more. I love to train at night, the teacher said. They rested a little, and the pain began to continue with even greater force. The king of the Zen dynasty held his sword tightly with both hands. He was very focused on this fight. The son watched his father. He had never seen his father fight before. He was never present. Mine had been going for several hours. The initiative passed from one to another. They didn't hurt each other. It was a friendly fight. A fight in which two friends took turns and exchanged experience in kung fu combat. Teach is almost never tired. He controlled the pain completely. In this one, I showed that I can do it. Then the teacher swung his iron sword strongly and struck with an insidious blow. Afterwards, the beggars practically touched the king's head. It seemed like this was the end. Everything stopped and froze. It was late evening. The weather turned bad. Thunder and lightning were all over the sky. It began to rain heavily. The rivals stopped. It seemed that the weather itself was asking to stage this battle. You are truly the best at what you do, my friend, said the king of the Zen dynasty. Thank you, my friend. This is the best praise. It's better because it comes from my best friend, the teacher said. You have reached great heights in Kung Fu. You are at the peak of your skill, said the king of the Zen dynasty. I didn't think you'd ever tell me this. The teacher answered the king. I'm telling you the truth, my friend. Thank you for a wonderful fight. It was great, said the king. The fight ended. It was raining outside. Everyone began to rest, relax mentally and physically. You were right, this fight will be a draw, said the son of the king of the Zen dynasty. Get the best warrior I've ever seen. He is fluent in all the arts of Kung Fu. Your father's professional skills and Kung Fu skills are excellent. This is the best thing I've ever seen, the boy said. I bow to your father. He is a great warrior, better at your job. You should be proud of your father. The boy thanked. Thank you in return. I also thank you for our meeting and for our friendship, said the son of the king of the Zen dynasty. Two friends, the king of the Zen dynasty, and the teacher stood and talked. And there was a lot to say to each other because they had not seen each other for a very long time. Thank you, my friend, for a wonderful fight. It was a great workout. You are very fit, the teacher said. Are you sure you don't need help? Are you sure you want to move on alone? At a meeting with your enemies, asked the king. Boy Song Bin looked at two great warriors. He was simply happy that he was present at this training battle. He was glad that he had written everything down in his notebooks. It was a good ancient style of Kung Fu. I haven't practiced this style for a long time. Now I remember everything. The teacher said to the boy, I hope, my boy, you managed to write everything down and sketch in your notebook. The teacher asked the boy, Certainly. I don't think I missed a word you said. Most importantly, I wrote down all the movements I saw, the boy said. This will be a wonderful book. It was still raining outside. The weather was terrible. It was very cold and a strong wind was blowing. Evening came. The teacher and the boy went to the province. A small local restaurant was waiting for them. They went to this restaurant to satisfy their hunger. They hadn't eaten all day. They needed to eat. The teacher ordered many different delicious foods. Of course, he did not forget about his signature hot aromatic tea. He simply could not live without him. Soon we will reach the province. The teacher spoke and drank his favorite tea from a cup. The boy looked at his teacher and understood what was happening. Something is wrong, teacher, the boy Songbin asked. The teacher looked at the cup of tea. I don't understand what's going on, the teacher said. 
The teacher closed his eyes. I think I'm a little tired. Tea should give me strength, the teacher said. I have a feeling that we will soon meet those people who have been pursuing me for a long time. Premonition never fails. The teacher said to the boy. At that moment, the door to the restaurant opened. A beautiful girl in a red robe stood on the threshold of the restaurant. The teacher looked at this girl. The boy looked at the teacher. The match was in shock. This girl turned out to be his teacher's daughter. He didn't understand what she was doing here. The girl stood and looked at her father. She stood silently, did not say a word. Father, maybe it's time for you to come home. Maybe it's time to go back to school, the daughter said. The sunbin boy opened his mouth in surprise. He had not seen his teacher's own daughter for a very long time. The teacher just sat silently at the table, closing his eyes. He didn't say a word. His daughter also stood silently and looked at her father. They haven't seen each other for a very long time. I think it's too late to go home. I need to accept what awaits me here, the teacher said. You know, my daughter, that I will not back down. This is my character. You said, teacher, we both understand that I will not be returning home to school at the moment. Until I finish my business, said his daughter's teacher, let me introduce you, including introducing your student to your own daughter. The girl looked at the boy Song Bin with an appraising look. She understood that this boy was with her father for a reason. The girl got angry and offended. She turned around and walked out of the restaurant. Was this your own daughter? The boy asked his teacher loudly. I'm just shocked you have a daughter. And you were silent, teacher? The boy continued talking. I've already seen her. I just can't remember where. Why didn't you tell me anything about her? The boy was indignant. The boy was sitting in his room on the bed. The teacher was standing next to him. Song Bin I was shocked. Teacher, why didn't you tell me that you have your own daughter? What else are you hiding from me? The boy asked. We're about the same age. She is also good at martial arts. What are they? Just a girl? I know you two met once. She told me about this. As far as I remember, it was a short meeting. She's a good girl. She just got really mad at me today. The teacher said to the boy, It turns out that you knew that you had to meet your own daughter. And they didn't tell me anything. It's not fair. In order to defeat your enemies, your daughter will help us. Although I concluded everything correctly, teacher's daughter. I lit a fire in the forest. It was already too late. She went to bed near the fire. She had had to sleep by the fire before. Her father taught her all this. He taught her to be strong and survive in any conditions. Morning has come. The weather was great. There was practically no wind and the sun was shining. The birds were singing. Teacher with Boy Song Bin went outside from their hotel. My daughter was already standing near the hotel. I'll go with you, father. This is not discussed. The teacher's daughter said clearly and confidently. The teacher agreed. They got into the carriage and drove forward. The boy constantly looked at his teacher's daughter. The teacher's daughter rode silently and did not say a word. Perhaps she was still resentful of her father. The teacher also sat quietly. He drove and was silent. He didn't say a word either. The teacher's daughter sat and looked out the window. She looked at the nature that was around them. Father, is there anything you want to tell me? I would like to hear all the details from you, the daughter said. The teacher pretended that he was sleeping. He drove and was silent. He did not say a word. Songbin remembered where he saw this girl, the daughter of her teacher. He saw it in the forest while he was walking. In fact, I just found out yesterday that you are his daughter, the boy said. He didn't tell me about you before. I realize that you have been traveling with my father for a long time. I think you know him better than I do, the teacher's daughter said. I have been his student for a long time. He taught me Kung Fu martial arts. One day I began to write down in my notebook everything he said all his philosophical thoughts. Then I began to record his martial arts. I watched and saw all the fights he had. I wrote all this down in my notebook. You are always by my father's side. This is true male friendship, the daughter said. By the way, 
I remember our meeting with you in the forest. Then you seem to me to be a very sweet and kind boy, the daughter said. Do you really remember this day? Do you remember our meeting? This is simply amazing, the boy said. My memory is fine. I'm not an old woman. I remember everything, the daughter said to the boy. The carriage stopped. The teacher, daughter, and boy came out of it. They stood and looked forward. There's a man ahead on the road. The driver of the carriage shouted loudly. The teacher looked ahead carefully. There really was a man sitting on the road. Two metal swords lay on the ground next to him. Are you a kung fu master? The young man asked the teacher. Yes, that's right. It's me. Be careful, the teacher answered this young man. I'm here for a reason, the young man said. The ruler of the great clan sent me on this road. I have a sacred mission for my clan. I will show you what will happen to you next if you continue on your path forward, the young man said. He held two metal swords in front of him. Then the young man who was sitting on the road raised his metal swords up. Everyone stood and watched what he was doing. This young samurai took his balls and rested them on his neck. Nobody understood what was happening. Nobody knew what he was doing. The samurai snapped his fingers. An energy wave comes off the tired finger. Then this energy wave began to circle around the head of the samurai. The teacher understood that this was a warning for him. But he didn't know how it would end. And what does this young man want to tell him? The outbreak is over. Everyone saw that the samurai was lying on the road. He was not breathing. It was clear that he had killed himself. The driver of the carriage came to check if the boy was alive. He chose his own path. The teacher said, The boy had never seen anything like this before. He didn't even take out his notebook to write it down. He thought this was a bad sign. Everyone got back into the carriage and drove on. The teacher said it wouldn't stop him. Just don't think about it, my children. The teacher said, To calm the boy and his daughter. Across the road there was a good large hotel. There was a restaurant where you could eat. The carriage stopped. Everyone got out of the carriage. Let's go to a restaurant and eat. The boy Song Bin proposed to everyone. Why are there so many people here? The boy asked. Because there is only one hotel and one restaurant on this road. People simply have no choice, the teacher said. They sat down at the table and the waiter approached them. What will you order? The waiter asked. The boy took the initiative and began to order for everyone. The teacher and his daughter were silent. There was tension. First, the waiter brought everyone their signature tea. The drink was very hot. Songbin, like his teacher, loved this drink very much. It seemed like they could drink the fragrant tea forever. After some time, the waiter approached them again. He brought three large bowls containing delicious food. It was seafood noodles. It looked very tasty. It was also all sprinkled with herbs. What an interesting smell. We need to try it urgently. The boy said and took the chopsticks in his hands. The teacher tapped the boy on the shoulder with his hand. He hit him hard so that he wouldn't have time to eat anything. What's the matter? What's going on? The boy asked his teacher indignantly. It's better not. It's my boy. I think this dish is poisoned. You know, my premonition has never let me down. What? Teacher? Are you serious? Are you saying that everything is poisoned and I could die now? Why didn't they tell you right away? The boy said. All the people in the hall who were visitors to this restaurant changed their faces. The faces turned black and their eyes shone. It was creepy and scary to look at them. They looked like aliens. Sometimes I see the future. Perhaps this is my gift. Right now, I saw that something bad was going to happen. The teacher's daughter said, How did you guess? Why, if you knew everything, didn't you warn me? The boy Songbin was indignant. These strange people stood and looked at the teacher. It was not clear what they wanted. I felt like I needed to go to this restaurant. I felt that they were waiting for me here. I knew that my enemies were here. I realized this immediately when I entered the restaurant because everyone pretended not to notice me. We are messengers of the great clan. We came to punish ourselves. End you once and for all. 
to take away the title of Grand Master of Kung Fu from you. I knew we wouldn't eat here. The teacher said ironically, I told you that my premonition does not let me down. Hit him, attack him. All the people in the restaurant screamed. They ran to attack the Kung Fu master. There were a lot of them. It turned out that all the visitors to this restaurant were warriors of the great clan. A very fierce battle ensued. All these people were armed with bamboo sticks and iron swords. The teacher was in good physical shape. He expected that this could not happen. He easily parried all these blows. The teacher's daughter and the boy hugged each other and worried about the Kung Fu master. The teacher fought with these people just like a beast. He was afraid of only one thing, that these people would not attack his daughter and his student. The teacher swung his iron sword in different directions. The blows came left and right, forward and upward. There was a lot of noise in the restaurant. It seemed that now this building would simply collapse and collapse. The teacher hit the enemies with such force that they flew off in different directions. Soon it was all over. The teacher stood and looked around. These people lay around him. Most of them lay silent. The rest moaned in pain. This bean ran out very quickly. There were many rivals, but no one could defeat the teacher. Who are you? asked the wounded bandit. Where do you get such strength? We have never seen this before. The teacher took a cup of tea. He sat down and silently drank his favorite aromatic drink. We are a squad of assassins who were sent by the clan to deal with you. But they didn't tell us that you are the same Kung Fu master, one bandit said. You don't need to know my name. You don't need to know about me at all, the teacher said. I got it. This is a great shame for our clan. He said he was a bandit. You killed all my soldiers. There were strong, proven people there. Every day they trained Kung Fu. The right one dealt with them in two minutes. It's a shame. Everyone stood silently and looked at this wounded bandit. What is he going to do? The boy asked. The bandit took his sword and pointed it at his throat. You have defeated us. One against a hundred people. This is a shame for me. He said he was a bandit and stabbed himself in the throat with all his might. Bloody, he fell to the ground. He died like a soldier, like a real warrior. It was a great shame for him. This is the right choice. You acted like a real warrior. The teacher commented on what was happening. The teacher threw his teacup to the ground. It's time for us to go, said the teacher. The Sunbin boy had never seen such a fight before. He was shocked by what he saw. Under the carriage in which they were traveling lay their driver. She pressed him on top. He groaned in pain, asked for help. Friend, you are alive, the teacher asked. The teacher began to help pull the cab driver out from under the rubble. I see you got it too. The teacher said, don't worry. We will compensate for your moral damage. The teacher let the cabman go for medical treatment. I sat down in his place. The three of them drove on. They drove for some time and were simply silent. They didn't know what to say to each other. The boy wanted to talk to his teacher's daughter. He couldn't find the right words. He was also very shy. Teacher, did you predict all this? Where did you get such a gift? Why don't you warn us what's coming next? The boy asked. The only poison was in the food. The tea was absolutely normal. I knew that for sure the teacher said. Why did they try to kill you? What are they? The boy did not stop asking the teacher. These are the soldiers of my sworn enemy. I already told you about this. I was ready for this. A long time ago they killed the girl I loved. I will never forgive them for this. Since then there has been hostility. You never told me this, teacher. I'll write this down in my notebook, the boy said, although I feel like these people will follow us everywhere. I foresee this, the daughter said. You're right, it could happen again. Well, there's no need to worry with you. I won't let you be offended. Father, this is not a game. This is all very serious. You plan to end them once and for all. I'm right, he said very much. The daughter was very worried about her father. Na knew his character very well. She knew he wouldn't back down. You're right, daughter. I am a grown man and I am aware of my actions. I have something to lose, that's why I want to end them. 
At this moment, the teacher was very determined. You are not a murderer, the boy shouted. You are a great warrior. You are a great kung fu master. You are on the side of good. I am very glad that you know me well, my boy. Yes, I'm not like them, but I am for justice. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Everyone fell silent again and rode silently and quietly. The horse stopped near the restaurant. They wanted to come in to eat because they had not been able to do so before. Hope this is a safe food, the boy asked. This is possible if it is poisoned. Talk to me. Tell me who sees what, who has premonitions. Eat everything well. Don't be afraid, the teacher said. This is safe food and is not poisoned. You can drink tea. The aspirations are poisoned. Don't be silent. Talk to me. The boy was worried and spoke. The tea is simply great, the teacher said. He smelled the aroma of this tea. Is this your favorite drink? The boy took a cup of tea with great pleasure. He began to drink it. The tea was really very tasty. This is just great, the boy said. I have never tasted tastier tea. I'm ready to kill my whole life. The boy admired the tea. Night has come. It was very dark outside. Only some windows had lights on. Our heroes went to the hotel to spend the night. The boy Songbin lay down on his bed. It was a very exhausting trip. He was practically exhausted. The boy closed his eyes and tried to sleep. It was a very stressful, long day. There were many different bad events that happened that day. The boy wanted to fall asleep quickly, to sleep as long as possible. He wanted to forget as quickly as possible. Songbin fell asleep and woke up again. He constantly remembered what happened that day. Everything was before his eyes. The dream is gone. The boy lay simply with his eyes open. He couldn't sleep for a long time. The boy Songbin decided to get up and go outside and take a walk. Perhaps after a walk he will fall asleep faster. At that moment, the teacher's daughter was walking on the street. She also had insomnia. She didn't want to sleep at all. Good evening, good night, the boy said. I see you are not sleeping at all either. I can't sleep tonight, my daughter said. Various thoughts come into my head. So I went for a walk. I want to thank you so much. Thank you for always being there for my father. The teacher's daughter spoke. I want to thank you for always being there. You seem like real friends. The daughter spoke. The boy did not expect such a development of events. He didn't know what to answer. Thoughts were confused in his head. I'm glad we met, the boy said. I am very pleased to meet you. I am grateful to the Lord God that we have such a wonderful war. For you, he is a teacher. For me, he is a father. Yes, this is a wonderful person. He has a lot of bright philosophical thoughts. He is a professional in his field. I am very glad that my father has such a friend. Of course, you are still too young. But I can already see that you are his best student. Why are you awake and standing here? Sorry for being curious, the boy Songbin asked. Maybe you also want to learn Kung Fu. Your father is a very good teacher, the boy said. I don't like to train. That's not mine. I'm a girl. I think one student is more than enough for my father. My father never taught me martial arts. He wanted me to be an ordinary girl. He didn't want me to get involved with it. Your father has one habit. In the evening or at night, he likes to go deep into the forest and conduct his training. I did not know that, the teacher's daughter said. It is very interesting. Can I have a look, my daughter asked. The boy Songbin and the teacher's daughter went ahead into the forest. They walked to the place where the teacher trains. In the distance, a teacher stood on the road. It was already too dark. The bright white moon above the teacher illuminated his path. Here we are. Look, the boy said and pointed to her father. The teacher stood calmly with his back to them. He was silent. He just stood and looked at the moon. How long can I wait for you, the teacher asked. How did you know we were coming, teacher? Or did you feel it again? He smiled and said, Boy, I'm not telling you this, kids. This is what I tell them. The teacher said and fell silent. What's happening again, the boy thought. He felt tension and a little fear again. This has happened to him before. 
This feeling of anxiety and fear had already happened to him. Machi understood that good things were not worth expecting. The teacher was focused and concentrated. He just stood there and was silent. People began to approach from the left side. The boy had never seen them before. Armed, angry people stood in front of the teacher. The situation was tense to the limit. They dealt with an entire squad of murderers. These were trained soldiers. You need to be careful with him. He is one, and there are two of us. We can definitely handle it. One of the bandits spoke. On the other hand, people also began to approach. These were the leaders of their clans, the most important ones. A woman in gray clothes approached. She didn't say anything. She was just silent. She walked around the teachers, silently looking at him. Another person approached from the right side, red hair and a crown on her head. Then another woman came up. She had short hair and earrings in her ears. She was holding a stick in her hands. Then she took her fan and opened it, and she began to blow it on her face. We are the five leaders of our clans. Here and now we must finish off the Kung Fu Master. Then we won't have any problems. Don't you dare do it! Who you are? The teacher's daughter screamed loudly. Get out of here. Who are you that we should be afraid of you? The teacher's daughter spoke. Now I will shut your mouth, one of the bandits shouted. He took his weapon in his hands and ran to the girl. I'm not afraid of you. You just don't know who was attacked. So it's time to explain everything to you, the teacher's daughter said. If you are so brave, come at me first. I'll show you who's boss here. I'll show you who's strong here. I won't see that you're a girl. You won't get away with this. You will answer to the fullest like a real soldier. The boy was very worried about his teacher's daughter. Don't worry, everything will be fine, the teacher said. A fight ensued. The teacher's daughter fought like a real warrior. It turns out that she knew a lot of kung fu techniques. The girl had a good shot. The teacher's daughter was also a very brave girl. She was afraid of these bandits. I gained strength like a real kung fu master. The bandits did not expect this. They didn't believe that a girl could fight like that. Don't be afraid. Everything will be fine. With that one nearby, everything will be fine. Trust me. The teacher continued to calm the boy. Clouds were floating across the sky. Everyone thought it was going to rain. The teacher's daughter stood far away. Behind her back, she held her long, beautiful sword. It was very unexpected. She was completely focused on this fight. She stood silent and waited for the attack. You're just a very lucky girl. The bandit shouted with all his anger, Your luck will soon run out, but you won't have a second chance. The bandit jumped high, hovered over the girl, and he wanted to strike his most insidious blow. No, you're wrong. You do not know me at all. I can say for sure. Now we will get to know each other better. The daughter shouted loudly, You won't get a second chance. Now we'll see who wins. It will be a shame for you to lose girls, the teacher's daughter said. It was a very serious fight. The teacher's daughter fought very well. She fought like a real warrior. My daughter is a real genius. She is unique. Nature forced her to be fearless. The teacher said, The girl fought like no other warrior had ever fought. Nobody knew that she mastered all the techniques of Kung Fu. With her small combat sword, she confronted the giant man. He just had a huge axe. The bandit struck the girl with his large axe. The teacher's daughter easily repulsed these blows. The battle had already lasted an hour. Everyone stood around and watched to see who would win. Nobody believed that the girl could fight so well. This is your end. He said he was a bandit. He swung his large axe high to strike the girl. The bandit already had wounds on his face. His lip was split and bleeding. These blows were inflicted on him by an ordinary girl. The teacher's daughter delivered her insidious signature kick with a roundhouse, and she struck this bandit on the spot. This will happen to everyone. Good should reign on earth, not evil, the girl said loudly and belligerently. One is ready. Anyone else want to get to know me better? She asked loudly. Girl! A dead bandit lay next to her. You are very good in combat, the second bandit said. 
It was beautiful and unexpected, he continued. I can cause an earthquake and rockfall from the sky. I only have to wave my magic stick once, the bandit shouted. He pointed his large and sharp bayonet directly at the girl. But the teacher's daughter was not afraid at all. You won't be so lucky this time. You won't get off that easy. I don't have a drop of pity for you either. He said he was a bandit. I don't like it when people feel sorry for me. And I don't like feeling sorry for myself. As my father taught me, I'm waiting, start. He said, girl, a tough fight ensued. The girl took it like a real warrior, like a real strong man. She didn't lose to the bandit at all. The teacher's daughter threw a lot of punches. She attacked her opponent. She didn't let him relax. We have orders to kill you all. You yourself wanted to be first on this list. I can't deprive you of this pleasure. The second bandit very quickly began to swing his spear. It seemed that he had several of them, about ten. Although he only held one in his hand, the girl managed to repel all his blows. She foresaw the future, so it was easy for her. She knew what was about to happen. Her gift of foresight helped her in this battle. She calculated everything several steps ahead. Girl, the girl looked into the bandit's eyes. She didn't have an ounce of pity for him. She was calm and focused. The bandit, on the other hand, was very fiercely angry. He constantly shouted bad words. He insulted the girl to unsettle her. You'll never beat me, the bandit shouted. I have a long, large spear, and you only have a sword. You didn't even scratch me. There's too much distance between us. A little more and you'll be done. He said he was a bandit. Bowden began to swing his sword very quickly. It seemed a little more and he would win. Be careful, shouted the woman with the fan. She sensed that he was going to fail. Do not bother me. I know what I'm doing. Hello, I'm an ordinary girl who knows a few kung fu moves. He said he was a bandit. The teacher's daughter was approaching the bandit with very fast steps. She moved so fast that she saw double. After a moment, she began to deliver the strongest blows. Now she was the only one attacking. She fought simply like a beast. The father stood aside and was proud of his daughter. Then the girl swung so hard that she delivered what was probably her most powerful signature blow. With her iron sword, she broke her opponent's spear. The bayonet flew to the side. You were just a stick in the hands of the bandit. This is impossible. I can believe my eyes. How did this happen? Where do you get so much strength? The bandit was indignant. This can't be true. It's just a nightmare. I cannot believe my eyes. The bandit continued to scream. The second one is ready. It was an interesting fight, the girl said. Who's brave? Who's next? Let's. The rest of the bandit stood and cautiously looked at the girl. They couldn't believe their eyes. How a girl can fight with the best soldiers. Let's try to come to an agreement with you, girl. What do you want? The next bandit suggested. Let's not waste our time. Name the price. Or name what you want, the bandit said. I foresee the future, said the girl. I know that you want to surround me and deal with me. Now just talk to me. What a smart girl. We did not expect... Then we will act according to the circumstances. We surround her. Let's deal with this girl once and for all. Don't be afraid. She's just a child. That's right. Don't be afraid. Attack one at a time. I'm waiting for you. The teacher's daughter said, Come in from the other side and said, Bandit, we will surround her. She can't handle two. She can't defeat us. Are the five great leaders of their clans really that weak and stupid? It's even funny to me. I thought you were much stronger. The teacher was in control of the entire situation. He was ready to help his daughter at any second. The teacher saw the fifth bandit running straight towards his daughter. He was not at a loss, grabbed his sword and struck. This blow hit the bandit right on the head. He was so strong that the bandit flew over himself. It seems to me that this is a failure, said one of the bandits. We need to do something quickly. I don't like all this either, said the woman with the fan. We urgently need to come up with something. I propose to fight to the last drop of blood. We can't just give up. 
The two women, the last two bandits, were ready to start another fight. They swung their spears and swords very quickly. This caused dust to rise. You will fight or you will just stand and communicate? The daughter asked loudly. The woman with the fan began to cast a spell. A strong wind began to rise around. She continued to cast her spell. The dust around these two women grew higher and higher. Suddenly they just disappeared. Teacher, it was magic. Is this legal? How could this be possible? I don't think it's fair. The boy kept talking. The teachers and the boy quickly approached the girl. They wanted to thank her for a wonderful fight. You gave a wonderful fuck, my daughter, the teacher said. I always believed in you. I knew you were special. What are we going to do with these three bandits? The teacher's daughter asked. I do not need them. Let's get out of here. I don't really like it here, the girl said. Wait. I wanted to show you, the teacher said, and began to take out his sword from behind his back. He took the starting stance. He was calm and focused. The teacher held his sword in front of him. The boy and the teacher's daughter stood looking at him. They didn't know what would happen now. The teacher swung his sword very hard. He raised it above his head, and he froze a little. He then swung his ball down hard. It was very fast. His sword was practically invisible. The boy had never seen anything like this before. When I met these bandits before, they didn't know what kind of punches I had. They didn't know that I could do Kung Fu. They were too confident in their abilities. This is what destroyed them. You need to respect your opponent. This is the main rule of Kung Fu. This blow which I just showed you saved my life then. They didn't expect me to be able to do this, the teacher said. I want to ask your daughter, can you repeat this blow or not? Perhaps you need to study or can you do it the first time? I don't know, father. Maybe I'll get it right the first time. But I'm not sure about this. This is a very difficult shot. How can you even repeat this the first time? I can't even imagine. My whole life will not be enough for me to learn this blow, the boy said. I can only lift two arms up above my head, without a real sword. Then quickly lower your arms down, so that no one notices it. As a battle ball, I don't know how to do it all. You are professionals at this. Evening came. It was already getting dark outside. White clouds were still floating across the gray sky. Sitting in his room, the boy began to write down in his notebook what he saw today. He had a lot to write down. Today he was delighted with the girl, who behaved like a real brave man. She defeated everyone. This needs to be written down urgently, the boy said. Songbin began to remember everything that happened and write down his notebooks. Now is very beautiful and very brave, the boy said. I think she knows all the kung fu moves. It's just great. I wrote so much about my teacher's daughter. I think I'll have to write a book about her soon. She definitely deserves it. The boy remembered that he also had a sword. He has super strength. He becomes icy. White light emanates from it. The boy stood near the closet and took out his sword. He looked at it and admired it. The boy Songbin picked up his sword. He decided to go outside with him. The boy walked along the road looking at his sword. He took it out and hid it back. He was very focused. The boy Songbin came to the forest. He decided to try everything he saw in practice. Remember what he remembered. The boy began to swing his sword. He did it the same way his teacher did it. He wanted everything to work out for him. He took different stances, exactly the same as he drew in his notebooks. Of course, not everything worked out for him. To do this, you had to work and train. And the boy mostly just wrote down his notebooks. Matches repeated attempts one after another. He wanted everything to work out for him, like his teacher. Little time has passed. The boy noticed how his sword was already cutting through the air. He really liked it. Hooray, I'm starting to succeed, the boy said in a satisfied voice. Soon I will be a real warrior. He tried that blow again, which cut through the air. He's done it again. Songbin is very tired. He put a lot of effort into this training. He hasn't been training lately. He wrote everything down for the teacher in his notebook. 
You need to be patient and keep training. Only then will it begin to work out. The boy remembered the words of his teacher. How could I forget? My teacher always told me that I need to work on myself. I can't skip training. I need to train myself. I just need to repeat all the movements that are written down in my notebooks. It's that simple. I remember, I repeat, and I should succeed. The boy said. He began to remember how his teacher fought. How does he hold his hands? What rack is it in? He remembered little things and details. The boy closed his eyes and remembered. He concentrated so as not to miss anything. I need to follow the airflow. I remembered. The sword is an extension of the hand. This means that the hand and the sword are one whole. The boy struck and succeeded. Magical. It illuminated the entire forest. White and blue were everywhere. The boy closed his eyes and listened to his heart. He also listened to his breathing. Songbin struck again. He tried it and it worked again. This means I can become a real warrior. Samgin was very happy that he got the blows. The sword obeyed him. They were like one. The Sunbin boy closed his eyes once again. He recalled what was written in the notebooks. He recalled the signature gifts of the combat sword. Samjin opened his eyes. He looked around. Did I really succeed in all this? He was shocked by himself. It worked. I did it. The boy shouted loudly and contentedly throughout the forest. I looked around and was surprised. The sun has already risen. It turned out that he had been training all night in the forest with his sword. Samgin was returning home. The night was over. They could be looking for him at home. It was already quite light outside. The weather was good. The sun was shining. Clouds were slowly floating across the sky. At the teacher's house, his daughters were sitting at the dining table. It was already lunchtime. The teacher's daughter held chopsticks in her hands. Songbin entered the room. Where have you been? The teacher asked the boy threateningly. Did you really get there earlier than us and go for a walk? This doesn't sound like you. Where were you and did you meet someone? The teacher asked. I didn't meet anyone. I didn't go for a walk. The boy did not know what to answer the teacher. Songbin did not let go of her beautiful sword. Now he was his true friend. He began to obey in his hands. I suggest you sit down at the dinner table, my boy. The teacher said, You didn't come for breakfast. Lunch, you shouldn't miss it. Eat well. Today is going to be a big, long day. Perhaps it will be heavy, the teacher said. If we go to the city today, we may meet more bandits on our way, the daughter said. I'm not going to hide from them at home. That's not why I came here. They all gathered in the city, so they will get what they deserve from me. The teacher continued to drink his wonderful tea. This is his favorite drink. Tea tones and calms the teacher. Father, tell me where and which way we will go. The teacher's daughter asked, I already feel that it will not be easy for us. I foresee something, but I can't figure out what. We will go to a high mountain. This is a high sacred mountain. Let's take all the essentials with us. And we go out. They got into the cart and drove along the road. Some people began to chase them. They also rode in a cart. It was clear that these people were bandits. They wanted to push the cart off the side of the mountain. The bandits had a bow and arrows. They loaded the arrows. And they started shooting at the daughter, father, and boy. The bandits fired arrows at the daughter and father every minute. They wanted to kill them. The teacher's daughter swung her ball so fast that she deflected all the arrows flying at them. The teacher continued to urge the horses. All together they continued to ride on this cart. Bandits blocked the road ahead. They cut down a large tree and placed it on the road. It was impossible to get around it. It was necessary to stop. The teacher concentrated and collected his thoughts. A plan was already born in his head. He began to accelerate the horses as quickly as possible. He constantly urged them on. The cart was picking up very high speed. The speed was so great that the horses jumped over this tree. The cart simply flew over the tree. Stones and sticks flew in different directions. Leaves were falling from the trees. But the strip flew over the tree. 
The boy was scratching his head because one stick from the tree hit him right on the head. Did he not understand what had happened? How did they do it? It was already too late. It was evening. They returned home. The teacher drank his favorite drink called tea. He always calmed him down. The teacher turned around and began to walk up the stairs to his room. Today was a hard day. I am going to sleep. I wish the same for you, the teacher said. The teacher's daughter and the boy looked after him. The teacher seemed to be very calm. In fact, he was very tired. The teacher's daughter decided to pour tea for the boy. I suggest you have some tea. You know, this is my father's favorite drink. They took cups of tea and began to drink it. The part was really tonic and calming. This is a great drink for the evening. How long have you been with my father? The daughter asked the boy. The boy thought what to answer to his teacher's daughter. He drank tea and chose the right words. I've been with your father since the moment he chose me for his school. He said I have the potential to become a good warrior. I believed him. My parents sent me to his school. I didn't really like it there. I often ran away from there. Your father always found me and brought me back to school. To be honest, I hated him a little. I heard that you write down everything my father does. You write his martial arts and his techniques in a notebook. This is true. It's not difficult for me. I tried it once and liked it, the boy said. The teacher's daughter and the boy Songbin sat at the table like best friends. They drank tea and talked. One day I gave my notes to your father to read. He read everything from beginning to end. The most important thing is that he liked it. You have a good opportunity to watch my father's training. For example, I haven't seen this since childhood. The hotel is awarded this honor. How I wanted to also look at my father and repeat what he was doing. The girl said, I love it. The main thing is that your father likes it. I have written so much about him that a whole book could already be published. I had to keep an eye on him. I memorized and then repeated everything alone. That's how I learned Kung Fu. To be honest, I am very worried about my father, said the teacher's daughter. She finished her tea and put the mug on the table. Everything will be fine, do not worry. The boy, the daughter of his teacher, began to calm him down. Your father is a very strong and brave man. He can beat anyone, the boy said. I know this perfectly well even without you, the girl said. I'm just worried about him. Night has come. The sky was dark. There was a bright white moon in the sky. Do you want me to show you my training? Can you see me training? I asked if the girl was with the boy. Can I? Of course I want. It is very interesting to me. Perhaps I will also write down after you in my notebook. The girl took the sword in her hands and began to swing it like a true professional. She was graceful in the martial art of Kung Fu. She performed circular strikes. He had never seen anything like this in her father. This was a new thing for him. He was pleasantly surprised. Every hit was perfect. Everything was masterfully done. One could look at this forever. Gracefully and beautifully, the girl performed all the kung fu strikes. One could only envy this. My God, how beautiful it is. The boy Songbin admired the girl. It's like the most beautiful dream I've ever had. The teacher's daughter was absolutely amazing. The teacher's daughter continued to swing her sword. It seemed to cut not only the air, but also the space around. It was just great. What do you think? What do you say? Did you like it? I asked if the girl was with the boy. It's simply amazing. I have never seen such beautiful movements. You never cease to amaze me. The boy continued to praise Songbin, the daughter of his teacher. Thank you for the compliments. I already told you that you are very cute. Thank you so much, the girl said. I watched, memorized your every move. This is wonderful. I've never seen anything like this before, although it seems to me that your movements echo the movements of your father. But you still have different styles. This is very cool. I took as a basis everything I saw from my father. I added a little of my own, and I got my own unusual style, that's all. I didn't see much of my father training. 
I remembered everything I saw down to the smallest detail. I trained in myself what I saw. Then this was not enough for me, and I began to add my own. Every day I came up with something new. I modified the exercises that I saw from my father. I remade them for myself. I added something new from myself, and the resulting movement was completely different from the movements of my father. I worked a lot with sword movements. I had practically never succeeded in anything before. But hard training did its job. You made your own style of kung fu as a child. I never ceased to be amazed by you. You are truly a unique girl. I'm an ordinary girl, just like everyone else. I just love martial arts. I just love coming up with new moves. I was very worried when my shots didn't work. With this big sword, I tried, tried every day, but it didn't work. I needed confidence. It was necessary to hold the sword tightly in your hands. I tried to train. I started to succeed. Already in my youth, I mastered this art. The art of fighting with a sword. You are a unique girl. You're just a genius. Now I understand why your father said that you were special. It turned out that I have a good memory. I can't watch it once or twice and remember everything, and then repeat exactly. Also, if you noticed, I really don't like people who brag about themselves. I don't like people who brag about their kung fu skills. Suddenly a man appeared in front of them in the forest. It was a stranger. They hadn't seen him before. It was a man with light clothes and black hair on his head. He was absolutely calm. I watched your training with great interest. To be honest, I really liked it. I enjoyed every movement. What you are doing is simply amazing. It's like nothing else. Who are you? My daughter asked. What do you need and what are you doing here? The stranger stood silently and looked at the guys. He didn't say a word. I myself can't figure out who I am. The stranger answered. The teacher's daughter took out her sword and held it out in front of her. The situation was tense. The forest was very quiet. The boy and the teacher's daughter stood and looked at the stranger. The girl was a little scared. Tell us what do you need from us, she asked loudly. Girl, speak quickly and answer. The girl moored towards the stranger. I want to hear the truth from you. Otherwise, we will have to fight you. We will not allow ourselves to be offended, that's for sure. I liked your kung fu moves. I've never seen this before. What you did just now, I am simply delighted with it, said a stranger. The boy Songbin stood there and didn't understand what was happening. He had never seen this stranger before. No, I won't show you anything. I do not know who you are. Get out of here, the girl said. The situation was unclear and tense. There was practically no wind. The white bright moon illuminated the entire forest. I don't like it when people rude to me, said a stranger. This makes me furious. The acquaintance made an incomprehensible movement with his hand, and as if by superpower and wind, the boy was drawn to him. The stranger grabbed the boy Songbin Ah very hard by the throat. It became very scary and incomprehensible. The stranger held the boy by the throat with one hand. I don't allow anyone to talk to me like that. I don't like rudeness. Hang in there, Songbin. The teacher's daughter shouted to the boy, I'm with you. I will not leave you. He won't dare do anything to you. I was very polite to you. I just asked you to show me the movement that you performed in training. That's all. The girl tried to stab the stranger with her sword. She couldn't do anything. The girl tried again. It didn't work out again. The superpower stopped her movement. The boy was in pain. His throat was clamped by the stranger's hand. He held on and tried not to show that he was in great pain. The boy didn't want his teacher's daughter to think he was a weakling. I'm waiting for you to show me these moves. Don't make me wait long. The girl was very angry. She looked at everything that was happening and did not understand what to do now. She didn't have a plan. The stranger continued to hold the boy's throat with one hand. So he was in limbo. The girl ran away and wanted to strike the stranger with her sword again. The teacher's daughter began to use her signature techniques. She alternated them and applied them to the stranger. Perhaps I'm that immortal hero? The one your father is so afraid of, said a stranger. I suggest you listen to me. And then perhaps you will save this boy's life, said a stranger. 
I'm not going to listen to anyone, the girl said indignantly and loudly. The forest was still very dark. Only the moon illuminated the forest. The girl continued to struggle. She tried to strike, but nothing worked. She tried again. Every attempt failed. A force she did not understand stopped her. The girl stopped and thought. She began to remember everything her father had once taught her. She was looking for a way out of this situation. The girl sharply struck another blow at the stranger. He was very strong. Her sword was stopped by an incomprehensible force. You won't succeed. You don't even have to try. You don't have as much power as I do, said a stranger. You can't do anything against me. You imagine yourself to be a war. You're just a girl from the street. The stranger shouted very loudly in an unknown language. It was terribly scary. And suddenly the stranger began to glow all over. It emitted white and blue light. It was very bright. The stranger opened his mouth wide. He put two fingers forward and began to shout something in a language unknown to anyone. You just have no idea how much power I have. I am the person whom this father is so afraid of. You girl don't have superpowers. That's why you can't resist me. Do you have no energy flow? You know a lot of great kung fu techniques. You have a unique technique. But you don't have superpowers. Bringing superpowers to life is the limit of the art of kung fu. Basically, you can't do anything yet. You know practically nothing. A stream of frantic energy emanated from the stranger. The lights illuminated the entire forest. It was very scary. The stranger constantly shouted incomprehensible words. It was like a prayer. Then it became like an ancient spell. Shut up. I'm tired of your screaming. You breed all the animals and birds of this forest. You won't scare me, the girl said. Only one person has the gift from above. There is only one person in this world with such power. The girl looked at this stranger very angrily. We were ready to kill him right now. They stood in the forest and looked at each other. In the forest, everything froze. It seemed as if time had stopped. Honestly, I'm amazed at your courage and stupidity. You're trying to beat me without having superpowers. I think this is a very stupid thing to do. Brave, but stupid. Stupidity is always inherent in girls. The girl remembered and took a very interesting stance. This was her signature kung fu stance. Her eyes were filled with rage. We were ready to tear this stranger to pieces. The girl really wanted to save the boy. She saw him suffer. He was in a lot of pain. Let my friend go. If you are so smart and brave, let it go. Let's figure it out one by one. There. Getting acquainted with continue to hold the boy's song bin hanging by the throat. Looks like you're too expensive. The stranger looked at the boy and said this phrase. If this boy is so dear to you, then I can manipulate you. This means you become even weaker than you were before. This turns out to be easier than I thought. The stranger began to wring the boy's hands. It seemed like he just wanted to tear her away from him. The boy song bin screamed in pain. It really was very painful. Cries for help echoed throughout the forest. See how helpless you are. I can do whatever I want. You can't stop me, said a stranger. No, not this. The girl screamed loudly. She ran and with all her might jumped on the stranger. The stranger let go of his hand and threw the boy to the side. He threw with very great force. The boy Sunbin fell and screamed in pain and fear. The concert girl continued to attack illegally with her sword. She tried to help the boy. Songbin boy was still flying in the direction the stranger had pushed him towards. A fight broke out between the girl and the stranger. She began to strike with her sword. Then the girl jumped up and caught the boy Songbin with her hands. She grabbed him very tightly. It seemed that in yours they were flying into some kind of abyss. This was really scary. Songbin, my friend, are you okay? The girl screamed loudly. She was very scared. The boy lay on the ground and did not move. I showed that he wasn't even breathing. She thought he was dead. I'm completely fine, the boy said, barely audible. Don't worry, I'm really good. You helped me. Were you ready to lose your life for this boy? Strange, I didn't understand this at all, said a stranger. The boy and girl sat on the ground and looked at the stranger. They were scared. Fear and uncertainty overwhelmed them. 
Judging by what I saw here, you are the weakest warrior. Believe me, I've seen a lot. You have not found an opponent equal to your status. You chose us. A boy who doesn't know how to fight and a girl. Yes, you are a vile coward. You are not worthy to be called a warrior. The boy screamed loudly. The boy continued to be indignant. I remember shouting loudly at a stranger. He held his shoulder because it hurt a lot. So it turns out to be a very brave boy. You almost died. I practically killed you. A man's footsteps were heard in the forest. The footsteps were getting closer. Don't worry about me. Everything is fine, the boy said. Yes, I see, the girl answered. The boy and the stranger turned to the side. The footsteps were getting closer. In front of them, they saw the teacher. What's going on here? You will be held accountable for everything you did here. This is what I promise you, great master of Kung Fu. Teacher, have you come? The boy was happy. Father, be careful, his daughter screamed. I already thought you wouldn't come. You're making yourself wait too long. It's obvious you're getting old, said a stranger. I plan to meet you on the high holy mountain. Why are you here? I do not understand. You know I changed my mind. I decided to have fun in this forest. Trust me, it was fun. The main thing is that I did not change my mind about our mortal duel. I hope you too. I reminded you, what if you forgot? Then I propose to fight right here. First, I will take revenge on you for my children, whom you offended today. Take your time, old man. Perhaps we will meet you on the holy mountain. I haven't decided yet where I want to deal with you. Now I'll teach you a lesson. This will be a lesson in good manners. Only real warriors know how to behave. But this is not about you. Now I'll show you what I'm capable of. And then I'll look at your kicks, which you showed to my children. Why am I not scared? Tell me, don't you know? The stranger asked. I will answer, because I'm not afraid of you. Today, right here, you could lose everything. Everything you had, everything you have. The stranger screamed loudly. The stranger began to wave his arms. He pronounced the spell loudly. It was a little scary. The entire forest was illuminated by the flashes produced by this stranger. Blue and white light was throughout the forest. The teacher began to deliver his signature blows. The teacher was the only one who was calm in this forest. He, well, everything will be fine. He took his sword and began to strike at the stranger. His blows hit the target. The teacher was in complete control of the situation. The teacher waited a pause. He monitored the situation closely. Then the teacher dealt him a cutting blow. He stuck his sword into the ground. The earth began to split in half. At this time, the stranger pulled out a fan and covered his face with it. He laughed loudly throughout the forest. The stranger flew into the sky, and he began to move away. It was an escape. I need to fly urgently, but we will meet again, with you and your children. Our conversation is not over, remember that. The sycophant flew higher and higher into the sky. He was already practically invisible. The boy's teacher, daughter, teacher stood on the ground and looked up. They raised their heads up and watched their enemy fly away. Is it really all over? The girl thought. Although she understood that this would not last long, the teacher stood silently. He raised his head up and watched his enemy fly away. He understood that he was fleeing the battlefield, like a coward. Are you all right, kids? The teacher asked. There I was, very worried about them. Yes, we are all right, father. My arm hurts a little, but it will pass, the boy said. Songbin walked up to the girl. He threw his robe over her shoulders. He wanted to warm her up so she wouldn't freeze. It's night outside and we need to go home to go to bed. Children should sleep at night. This hole is an adult I'm talking about. Teacher, your daughter almost died that night. You just send him home to bed. The boy ran to catch up with the rain of his teacher. She walked quickly along the road towards the house. Wait, don't go so fast. I do not have time for you. We came here together and let's get out of here together. You worry that you couldn't defeat this stranger. Should not be doing that. This is reality. I'm disappointed, the girl said. I couldn't do anything to save you. How can you say that? 
You did everything you could. In the end, he let me go. I was hoping for a completely different result. I wanted to punish him and defeat him. We lived. That's the most important thing, the boy said. You fought like the greatest warrior. You did everything in your power. Well done. If it weren't for you, I don't know what would have happened to us. Don't worry. You are a very good fighter. Are you telling the truth? Or do you just want to console me? I don't need to be sorry. You know that. Thank you for yet another salvation of mine. Lately, I thank you very often. It turns out that this one often saves my life. I like it. The girl fell silent and thought. She liked the boy's compliments to her. I thank you too. You carried yourself like a real warrior. He fought like a real man. You are also a great fellow, the girl said. The boy and girl came home. It was very late. I really wanted to sleep. The teacher's daughter behaved like a capricious girl. To Songbin, she seemed like a little girl. It's soon morning. It's time to go to bed. Need some rest, the girl said. I wanted to offer you the same thing. The night was very difficult. You need a good night's sleep to rest. When we defeat all enemies, then we can get a good night's sleep, the girl said. I still need to train. Will you come and see? Of course I'll come. Necessarily. I will take the events, a notebook, and write down everything I see, the boy said. The girls really liked his words. I liked that they became friends. Sunbin walked down the corridor towards his room. He walked quickly to get into bed faster. He walked and remembered the girl's words. He was fascinated by her. He really liked her. The boy sat down on the bed and thought, So much happened that night. It was just terrible. It was a hard night. I urgently need to go to bed and sleep. You need to rest properly in order to be vigorous tomorrow. But the boy remembered that his teacher had not yet returned home. This alarmed him. Boy Song Bin got up from their beds, left the room, and went to look for their teacher. The big luminous moon was all over the sky. The boy had never seen such a moon before. Saw. In the yard near the house, he saw a teacher standing on the road. His gaze was directed towards the mountains. The teacher stood looking at the mountain where he was supposed to meet his enemies. The teacher heard footsteps next to him. His student approached him. Teacher, what are you doing here? The boy asked. Are you okay or not? Let's go home to rest. Don't worry. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. You are a true friend. Um, I suggest you go home and talk to your daughter. You must calm her down. Today was her turning point. I think you should go talk to her. Ask how she's doing. Ask what she is thinking about. What are you worried about? You are with her all the time. You are in good hands. I'm sure she's doing well. She is a very strong girl. She had to go through a lot since childhood. She learned a lot on her own. The teacher said, I'm thinking about sending her back home, to school. I think she will be fine there, and safe. I think this is a bad idea. She, on the contrary, wants to be near you always. She is jealous of me that I am always with you. She always asks me about you. You are her father. It's obvious that you love her. It's just that you haven't seen each other for a long time. You are not used to each other. So what about you? You, my boy, do you want to go home to school? Answer this simple question. It's out of the question. You know that you and I are like yin and yang. We need each other. I will write a book about you. Your enemies have decided to fight you on the holy mountain. As I understand it, this is why we came here, after the boy. Yes, we came here for this. Who knows? I don't like running from my enemies. This means that my departure home does not solve anything. Next to you, I feel safe, the boy said. You are a good friend, the teacher replied. Machi was simply beaming with happiness. He was very pleased with these words. The next day came. The weather was wonderful outside. Our heroes all set off together on the cart. The teacher sat in front and controlled the horses. His daughter and the boy in Songbin sat in the back. The road was too bad. There were a lot of holes. The road itself consisted of nothing but stones. Something tells me that we won't be able to ride this cart any further. The teacher said, They sat down on a stone. 
the teacher took out his thermos. I opened it and was tired of drinking tea. Tea always calmed and toned him. I'm sitting drinking tea. It's so quiet around. It's as if there are no enemies. Beautiful time. Father, I got a horse. She will help us get there. She is small but very strong. The girl said, This is simply wonderful. The teacher was very happy. The horse will help you get to the place much faster. Everyone decided that the boy Songbin would ride the horse. The boy most often got tired when he walked. It was a long, long road into the mountains. It was very difficult. It was cold and there was fog all around. The boy looked around. He really liked everything he saw. It was mesmerizing nature. It's very beautiful here, the boy said. It's a shame that this might all end soon, teacher. Do your enemies live so high in the mountains? Either eagles or dragons can live here. I'm even afraid to think what we might encounter ahead. You don't even give me any guesses, the boy said. The main thing is to think about what we will do after the victory. This is a more interesting topic to think about. The boy thought. Several more hours passed. Our heroes were still on the road. They were moving along mountain roads. There was fog all around them. It was cold and it was becoming difficult to breathe. There was an incomprehensible silhouette in the fog. It looked like a big statue. And it's a big monument. Where did this big statue come from here? Who made it out of stone? The boy asked. To me, my friends, this is not a stone statue. This is something different. He said the teacher stopped and froze. A very strong wind blew. Snow was flying straight into my face. Visibility was practically zero. Slide faster from this horse, the girl shouted to the boy. In front of everyone, the statue began to chew. The stone statue began to transform into a giant man. Then this man turned into a gray-haired old man. He had a white, large, long mustache and a long white beard. Everyone froze and looked at this old man. It was a little scary. Nobody expected me to be ready at all. You are that great Kung Fu master. In a rough voice? asked the old man. Yes, it is. I am a Kung Fu master. I did not choose this title myself. People gave it to me. For my merits, for my victories. I am the king of these mountains. I am in charge here. I have a bird's eye view of everything that happens on earth. It's me who gives the orders. Are you ready to fight me? I do not know you at all. I've never heard of you. Perhaps it is the mountain dragon that told you to fight me. You are right, if we defeat you. Mountain dragon, free us. We will be free and can return to earth. I think today is the day. I've waited for many decades. You yourself came to me. How interesting. He comes out and was waiting for me. So, I was bored. So he was thinking about me. I won't lie, we are unpleasant. Have you decided to laugh at me? You're just a person who knows how to fight well. And I'm practically a god. The teacher took out his long, large iron sword. Everything was just beginning. He understood that now there would be a battle for life and death. He was ready to bear this pain with dignity. You could say he had been preparing for it all his life. A very serious, tough fight began. The big old man constantly caused a strong wind, which knocked our teacher's feet. The old man had large red boxing gloves on his hands. It seemed that one blow could simply kill our teacher. The teacher began to deliver his signature blows with his large metal ball. He carefully followed all the movements of this giant old man. He didn't want to miss a hit from him. The old man was so tall that it was impossible to jump up to him. It was difficult to fight him. Every blow that the old man struck with his gloves was calmly repelled by our teacher. From the blows of this old man, a snow avalanche descended straight from the mountain to the ground. It was terribly scary. The teacher's daughter and the boy Songbin could barely stand on this mountain. The snow avalanche practically covered them completely. There was a very strong wind. With his blows, the giant old man caused a blizzard. A blizzard and strong wind with snow knocked the teacher off his feet. The teacher behaved like a real warrior. This was his main fight in life. He couldn't lose. The teacher struck a very hard and strong blow with his sword. 
right over the hand of this giant old man. The giant old man dodged this blow. The teacher began to strike more and more blows, one after another. The teacher was focused on this fight. He was in complete control of the situation. He had a hairstyle that he would soon win this fight. The teacher continued to deliver his insidious blows. These blows were on target. The old man received great wounds from them, but victory was still too far away. The old man had so much strength that no other person on earth had. The teacher put all his strength into the blows. He constantly attacked the giant old man to win. Is this all you are capable of? The giant old man asked the teacher. I thought you were much stronger and much taller. At that moment, the teacher jumped very high and kicked the giant old man in the chest with all his might. He added blow after blow to knock this giant old man off his feet. Suddenly, the giant old man began to fall. The teacher managed to knock him down. It seemed that the enemy was defeated. Victory is near. The giant old man's legs began to tangle and stagger. It was clear that there was no strength in my legs anymore. Old man, very tired. He lowered his hands down and no longer had the strength to raise them to fight further. The teacher turned to see how his daughter and his student were doing. In this snowstorm, nothing was visible. At that moment, the giant old man decided to knock the teacher down. He accelerated with all his might and jumped on the teacher. The teacher quickly turned around and grabbed his sword. He immediately began to fight off the giant old man. The teacher continued to strike him with his blows. The battle continued again. This went on for several hours. Nobody wanted to give up. Nobody wanted to lose. Everyone just needed a victory. The old man tried to grab our teacher with his big red gloves. It turned out to be not so simple. The teacher fought off each such grab with his glove with his sword. The blows were so strong that the hand flew to the side. This struggle took a very long time. She was not on life or death terms. There's only one fly left alive. The teacher raised his large sword high above his head. He swung as hard as he could. The teacher jumped up and hit the giant old man's body with all his might. This was probably our teacher's strongest blow. The big giant old man began to split into two halves. The fire came out of his chest. It looked like lava erupting from a volcano. His eyes were white. The mustache stuck out in different directions. The whole body was burning inside. It burned with a bright flame. The historian, no. The giant old man did not expect such an outcome of events. From the first minutes of the battle, he was confident of his victory. Out of pain and disappointment, the giant old man raised his head up and began to scream loudly. It was just a cry of despair, the cry of the loser. The old man gathered all his remaining strength into a fist and once again tried to attack the teacher. The teacher controlled this fight. His sword was ready to deal another killing blow to this mischievous old man. The teacher jumped as high as possible and began to deliver blow after blow to the body of this harmful big giant old man. The heart began to stop. It was red, a terrible sight. The big giant hand of this old man flew to the side. The teacher managed to cut her off. Victory was very close. The giant old man knelt down and bowed his head. He understood that confrontation was futile. He understood that he was losing. The teacher stood in front of the giant old man. He held a sword in his hands. He was ready to repel the blows of this old man again if Togo had the strength to do so. The children were lying in the snow. We didn't watch this whole fight. They have never seen such a battle anywhere. In general, he took his sword and went to meet this giant old man, who was kneeling exhausted. Did you want to look at me? You wanted to see what I could do, what I was capable of. Well, you looked. Now you can draw conclusions. I won't kill you. I have no right to take the life of people like you. You are so completely punished. They are always for good. The teacher turned away from the old man. The fallen table was on its knees, bleeding. He didn't have the strength to move. He didn't have the strength to speak. It seems to me that everything is clear with him. He's just gigantic in size. 
As for fighting qualities, he is also so-so, the teacher said. The teacher put his ball behind his back and walked towards his children. Because of the heavy snow, he could not see where they were. The teacher moved with quick steps. He was worried about their health, about their lives. He couldn't find it with his eyes. The teacher stopped. He looked around. Where were the children? He couldn't find them. He began to worry. Behind him, with the last of his strength, a giant old man began to rise. He wanted to deliver an insidious, sneaky stab in the back. The children screamed loudly. They saw what was happening behind the teacher's back. Watch out for him in the back. The boy screamed. Father, be careful. The daughter screamed. The teacher quickly took out his long iron sword from behind his back, and he pulled it up. The big giant old man just bumped into this sword and was pierced through. He didn't expect this. It was a very deep and fatal wound. After that, the old man could do nothing more. He simply fell into the snow. Feel. The teacher began to fold his long metal sword back behind his back. He was glad to see the children. The main thing is that they were alive. The student and the teacher's daughter quickly ran to meet him. They ran to congratulate him. Hug. At this point, the teacher has accomplished a feat. The daughter immediately began to wipe the small wounds. She wiped the blood from her father's face. It was real care and love. Sambin understood one thing at that moment. He knows how to end his book. There may be several of these books. Something told the boy that this was far from the end, to be continued.